Hey everybody, this is Jose here. Uh, we're starting in 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, this message is uh, an intro pre-hello. Uh, but uh, also, as you know from prior sessions, it would be great if you could confirm on the comments box uh, that you hear me. So that way I know that uh, it's all good tech-wise and we can start on time. So please uh, just go ahead and type a quick hello, a quick yes, Jose, we hear you, something like that and we'll get started okay wonderful thank you guys thank you for that morning morning happy sunday everybody so let me maximize uh, our intro slide so we can start properly with our disclaimer and all those things um quick uh, look at the comments box jose option sharpening sessions are awesome i'm glad i watched them oh thank you so much uh, you hear me loud and clear, very good, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so guys, let's get started. Uh, a pleasure uh, to to get together uh, one more time, uh, this time uh, over the weekend, which is our sharpening time. Uh, today is April 28, 2019. Uh, I'll be your guide, Jose Blasco. Uh, and uh, as we begin the session, as always, you know, we have a little disclaimer here, legal stuff, regulation, all that stuff. So let's see how fast I can do it today. <laughs> so the following videos clips demonstrations are for educational and instructional purposes only Tradictive provides these videos purely for the purpose of demonstrating a method of using the product using users understand that all the content used in the video is purely for demonstration purposes only and is not a guide and does not provide any indication or prediction of actual results as a user you understand and agree that hypothetical results obtained through demonstration do not indicate in any way the results you may receive on using your pro our products good so we have the disclaimer legal stuff we are organized now to begin the session again today Sunday so we are here for sharpening purposes uh, we've been um, let me let me get um, very quickly here a, a web browser uh, just so we are properly organized so you know if I come in here let me disable the bookmarks so you have a little more space on the screen so if I get into trade with ufos.com uh, I mean not that this is new to you guys all of you know our website uh, if I get into get together uh, same thing not not that is new uh, you guys are here today precisely because you are familiar with this section of the website but uh, the one thing i would like to point out is the fact that uh, sharpening is happening today april 28 okay but i want to make sure you all realize that uh, next weekend okay we don't have sharpening okay we'll have a little break next weekend uh, so we'll go from sharpening into short term long term and then back into short term long term and then we go back to the pattern sharpening short term long term sharpening short term long term okay so long story short uh, next weekend uh, we'll have a little break and uh, this is also because uh, i believe that today we're going to be able to finish uh, our first pass if you wish to um, um to the intraday trading that we have been learning okay so if i uh, use our youtube channel also to show you the playlist, which probably most of you are familiar with, you know, we have a playlist here in our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com uh, slash C slash trade with UFOs. Okay, most of you should be familiar with the YouTube channel. Uh, I would say all of you. And if you're not, um, now you are. And if you haven't clicked on subscribe yet, please uh, click subscribe, okay? Uh, and, uh, and you know, that way we can stay connected. But anyway, the bottom part here is the playlist, okay? And there is one playlist called the Get Together Sessions, right? So again, uh, I'm just stating here something that I am pr pretty aware that most of you should know, but for the very few that don't, it's important that you realize that the recording sessions are sorted just like the calendar. You have the sharpening and then the short term and then the long term. And then it starts again with the sharpening and then the short term, and then the long term, right? So notice how uh, today is going to be our session four when it comes to intraday trading. So last week on the 21st, we did intraday three. The week before on the 14th, we, we did intraday two. The week before on April 7th, we did intraday one, okay? So in other words, we've been running some intraday stuff, uh, mostly focused on futures. We touched a little bit on Forex, just a little bit. But we've been running some intraday stuff uh, for a while now, uh, and I believe that today we should have time to kind of conclude this series of intraday trading, uh, where now, if you think about what, we've, what we have been doing uh, in the past weeks, 
uh, really when we are when we are doing the the short term okay when we are doing the short term sessions like last Tuesday for example on April 23 uh, really we did progress and we were able to find more trades and execute more easily why because now thanks to the sharpening sessions we are much more in a place where we speak the same language okay so what uh, what we're going to do today is kind of conclude this first pass okay we will come back to intraday trading just like we we did before uh, options okay option seven option six etc etc so you know uh, when, when we finalize uh, session seven of options I said we will go back to options, okay? But it was time to move into intraday trading and futures and forex. Uh, and uh, so what we'll do is that at some point we'll come back to options and keep going deeper. And just like for the intraday today, uh, my plan is to conclude with session four this first pass of intraday trading. But we will come back to intraday trading, okay? It's just that we're gonna be, uh, you know, moving from subject to subject, okay? And giving you tools, trading together, using the app, getting better at using the app, getting better at our rules getting better at the accountability working together getting better at the discipline and the management of emotions of trading all those things you know i'm trying to hit on all the different angles uh, to help you uh, succeed okay because uh, obviously you know uh, our beautiful uh, auto ufos app is as i just said beautiful but at the same time who clicks the button right it's us uh, and we are human beings and therefore we're exposed to the beauty and the fragility of being human when it comes to emotions, lack of discipline, you know, certain things that happens to some of us because we happen to all be human, okay? <laughs> so uh, I'm trying to work on those different angles. So I'm beginning today with a little bit of an intro so you also understand how I'm thinking as I am, uh, you know, sharing with you uh, certain aspects of trading and so on. And my goal, as you have heard me say a million times, is to end up you know, having a methodology with very clear steps, actually the rules, which is the key. I always said, and I said it many times, that we'll create a diagram, like 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 a, like a graphical visual representation of the rules in the form of a, a flowchart, something like that. And I'll be working on that, and when I have it ready, I'll be sharing that with you guys. Uh, right now, we are just building it from the point of view of uh, the concept, and therefore I am using the words and the typing, and sometimes my typing is messy and I do it on purpose. So you, you kind of understand how we get to where do we get. And in the end, you know, I'll be producing those uh, additional documents that I'll be sharing with you guys, and and everything will be very visual, very neat, okay? But it will be well understood as well because we spend time sharpening, okay? And so again, uh, super nice of you guys to, to join me on the Sundays uh, or Saturdays as well, uh, over the weekend in general to to be able to do this okay uh, let me see a few more of your comments coming in here and we'll start uh, yeah maka i am halfway through the sharpening sessions too couldn't agree more thanks so much maka and i know that you know it's um in one hand you know I, I wish we could have much more time to spend time together in the other hand i'm trying to minimize the amount of sessions uh, in a, in a way where I know all of us are busy people. Normally, other people were busy. We have responsibilities and stuff. And uh, what happens is that, you know, uh, if I go back in time and I ask you all, hey, go back to November 14 last year and start watching every single session all the way, uh, well, that may be a little too demanding on my side. Is that making sense? On the other hand, it would really help for us to speak the same language and for you to be exposed to everything we do. Uh, but at the same time, it's it may be a little too much because we happen to be busy. So, for example, Maka, you are halfway into reviewing all of this, which is which is great, uh, and and it will help you if you do that, and it will make also my life easier when when I am conducting the sessions because the more we speak the same language, the better. But at the same time, I, I am also trying to kind of minimize the amount of sessions or the duration of the sessions in the sense of you have less stuff to review and I'm looking for ways to be as um, direct as possible, as efficient as possible with the time, even though I don't want to miss on giving us some explanations that sometimes are very basic and sometimes take a lot of time, but basic in this case, in this case means to build a very strong foundation. And therefore, you know, I'm just trying to, to find a balance between all of this to just get all of us trading better and better and better every day and at the same time use the least amount of our time as possible. So I'm just working on finding the balance, which I'm not sure uh, I know where the balance is, but working toward that direction. Uh, and that's why I need so much your feedback as well. Uh, so you guys you guys tell me, okay? I am. We are certainly open to, to add more sessions and so on, but this is just to accommodate other people that are not available in certain times. But at the same time, I would like to have 
the least amount of sessions, if you wish, that you guys need to be watching uh, to hit the best performance possible, given the amount of time used into, uh, you know, uh, training yourself or, you know, uh, being coached into how to use the app and the tools and the training and the roles and all of that. Okay. So looking for that balance, which I'm still trying to discover where it is. And again, uh, please, 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 as you do, but keep, keep sharing with me. How is it going? Uh, as we work together on this, uh, no matter if it's going well or it's not going well. Okay, so uh, I, I, you know, we, we've received different different emails of a different nature, and uh, you know, this is about real trading, and real trading means that sometimes uh, there is some struggle, sometimes there is some some very happy news, right? And uh, we need to know all of it to to help you better, guys. Okay, very simple. Anyway, a uh, few more comments. We go, uh, Marcus. How are you, my friend? Uh, that's some Jose. How long will be the recording available? I have no intention to remove the recordings, Marcus. So, so they'll be there. You know, the recordings are to help. So, no intention to remove them unless you know we were to come up with a better recording that may make sense to substitute an old recording. Then we would do it because you know, of course, the 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 newer the examples, the more updated the market data, if you wish, uh, the better. At the same time, certain concepts are universal and foundational, and it doesn't matter if it was a trade executed uh, 15 years ago or 15 minutes ago, it doesn't matter. So no intention to remove recordings unless something better is coming, and then we may remove some old recording, okay? But it, this is about uh, helping you guys. Uh, John, will you be doing sharpening on swing trading? Yes, yes. So the, here's what we're going to do. Uh, today, my plan is to conclude sharpening on intraday in this first pass. And we will come back to intraday and get deeper. And by the way, I am aware that uh, most of the emphasis have been futures in intraday trading, um, where you know we, we should be talking about forex as well. And I've been touching on it, but just a little bit. And forex markets are amazing, so you know there is a lot of money to be made as well. And uh, I would like to get a little deeper. Okay, so we'll do that too. But based on on your emails and so on, what I think makes the most sense for uh, two weekends from now. Uh, because remember, next weekend there will not be sharpening, uh, but two weekends from now there will be. So uh, I think that what makes that what would make the most sense is that the next weekend we just do an open session, open session, pure Q and A, right? Pure Q and A, uh, and we talk about calibration. That is one of the things that many, many, many of you are asking. So calibration, you know, we, we, we often send emails and responses and stuff, but, you know, you cannot express yourself all the way in a written paragraph unless you were to write a book, all right? So um, I think it would be very healthy to have a nice calibration session over the weekend where we go deep into it, okay? But then on top of that, on, in, uh, in, uh, on top of getting deep into the calibration thing uh, and other aspects of either trading view and trade station and differences and, you know, many things that you guys are asking all the time. Uh, on top of that, I think it would be very good as well to have a very, totally open Q&A session where you guys, you know, maybe you send us screenshots, you know, whatever uh, questions and we just talk about anything you guys need, okay? And we just make it very, very open, okay? And after that, then we'll go back to standardized session, if you wish. And we need to talk more about Forex. We need to talk more about swing trading. This is something that we have not done well up to this point. We need to get deeper into options as well. Some of you are eager to look at more advanced methodologies with options, how to take care of trades, okay? Uh, Babu, I don't know if Babu is with us today. He was sending a very good question the other day about, you know, how do I manage an iron condor? What, what if the market goes against me? So, so there are multiple things that you can do, right? So uh, again, Lots of stuff coming, okay? But I'm just trying to find this balance with, you know, uh, giving tools for everybody. Uh, we are a diverse group. Some of you are very advanced. Some of you are not. Some of you are short-term. Some of you are long-term. Some of you trade decentralized products. Some of you trade centralized products. So it's it's a little bit of everything, and, and that's my intention, okay? But that's a very long introduction, okay? So we need to get started here. Uh, last question. Let me see... Uh, D Hyde, is it all right with you if we make our own recordings? You mean recording the session and, and keeping it on, on, on your hard drive, for example? Yeah, why not? I mean, it, this is uh, this is information to help. Is that making sense? So you can we, we, we plan to just leave it in the um, in the in, in the YouTube, right? So if, if we just if we change it from YouTube, it's because we believe we, we created something better. So we don't we don't plan to remove anything at least for now. Okay. So yeah, absolutely, no problem. Uh, thanks for asking. By the way, that's. Really respectful of you to ask. Uh, really appreciate it. Anyway, so um, let's begin the day. So where are we at? 
Okay, well, today, uh, session four of intraday trading, we've been doing a lot of progress, uh, and I'm quite happy about the progress that we've been doing. We started, you know, a few weeks ago uh, with this blank page of paper where we started pointing out more precision, more evidence, more conservative. Well, we've been talking about all of this, right? Uh, more precision uh, with specific time frames. We call them edge time frames, more evidence, right? We've been looking at those share bars, tick charts. We've been looking at reactive time frames, more conservative, right? In the sense of getting in with limit orders or waiting for some reaction with the reactive time frames to happen for you to get in. We need to talk a little more about that, right? Then we started talking about setting targets. That was our step two. We talked about two different ways to set targets, depending if you are in a strong trend or a weak trend. Uh, trade management, we haven't talked about this at all, and this is going to be the key for today. We'll talk about trade management, okay? I think that all of us in trading, okay, and, and we've received email from you guys as well with, with comments uh, as, as, as such. Uh, all of us have been in, at times in a trade where market starts moving your way, nice, nice green kicking in, nice, nice profit, you know, uh, but you're still far from target, so you just hold it, hold it, hold it, next thing you know, something happens, the market goes back all the way, you end up with such a disappointing profit, you never reach the target, and the, the profit was very disappointing, and th th that's the key question, right? Some people are going to be like, okay, set and forget and do nothing. Right, and sometimes you do that, and it's amazing. But sometimes you wish you had done something instead of suddenly forget. And sometimes you you do something, okay, and then you end up with a very small profit, and you could have made more if you had set and forget the trade. And so you know, it's it's so what's right, what's wrong, where do we draw the line? We need to talk about trade management. We need to talk about what's the healthy way or uh, the the right way to do trade management. Because like everything in life, there is no right or wrong. Okay, there there is uh, pros and cons of different actions, and um, now, the, the last thing you want to do is to keep changing from one side to the other side um, out of how you feel because of what happened to your last five trades. You need to have, again, back to the rule, okay? Back to the mechanical approach to trading. Consistent action leads to consistent results. So that kind of concept. So we need to talk about where to draw the line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And today we spend most of the time talking about trade management, okay? Which is something that I know many of you are waiting big time. Uh, futures. Uh, we talked about the right symbols to be used the other day, and we found a very simple way, very, very simple way, which was basically to use this type of symbology at NQM19, where you are using the specific uh, letter for the specific expiration month. But at the same time, we are still using the at, meaning that the contract is continuous, and therefore you can place orders, but you, you can also see, when it comes to target setting, you can also see UFOs that were created a long time ago maybe using contracts of a different expiration date. But it doesn't matter because since you use the ad, you have the continuous symbol, uh, even though you could certainly place orders at the same time. Uh, we also talked about adjusted contracts, non-adjusted contracts. Uh, well, actually, I should not phrase it this way. That makes no sense. Uh, contracts are uh, adjusted or not adjusted applied to the symbol, not to the contract. So we, we talked about adjusted symbols, non-adjusted symbols. Uh, and uh, the reality is that we saw that based on stats, uh, uh, unadjusted, okay, uh, it's, it's not the way to go. Uh, it's better to use uh, adjusted symbols. So the ad with, without equal something XN at the end actually produces better results. Could you use the equal whatever XN at the end? Yes, you could. Uh, and the difference was very minor. But since the difference is so minor and actually the performance is less, so why would you? So, you know, we came up with this very universal symbology uh, to make your life simpler. And also, uh, if you happen to use a different platform, such as uh, Think or Swim, Interactive Brokers, where you may not have the opportunity to use a, an unadjusted symbol, so then now you just made your life simple. You're just charting in a way that is more universal. And uh, and that's it. Okay, so no need to make our lives complicated unless it gives you an edge. If it doesn't give you an edge, why would you? Okay. Um, Forex. Okay, we talked about the fact that it's non-centralized. Uh, we didn't spend time enough talking about Forex. And we will, guys, okay? We will. But uh, really, basically, what we said at the time was the fact that when you trade markets that are non-centralized, uh, you know, on your charts, you can have three things, right? Which is the bid price, the last price, and the ask. We said when you trade markets that are non-centralized, what you get is the bid. 
and you can change it to the ask as well, but you cannot get the last, okay? And therefore, uh, you know, it, it would be important when charting Forex and planning trades on Forex to be aware that the ask price is what you pay when you buy, the bid price is what you receive when you sell. And also that, uh, you know, you need to add a little bit of extra uh, room when setting stops because not every broker may have the same data feed with the very, very same prices. And you may have your stop too tight, get stopped out, and then see that Forex currency pair move all the way to where you thought. And therefore, uh, we need to talk about that, okay? Uh, so um, we, we, we need to talk about that more in depth. Uh, and basically, I just summarized what, what we have seen uh, and we did talk about it, but we need to get deeper into Forex, okay? Uh, just like I see Orlando's question, talking, asking about stocks and ETFs, we will certainly talk about stocks and ETFs too, okay? Uh, not today, because today we are focusing on intraday trading, and normally intraday traders, we want to trade highly leveraged products, okay, to, to increase performance. Also, normally we like to trade products which are 24 hours, okay? Because that way you can trade at any time you want. It doesn't need to be during US market hours. It could be any other time. So normally Forex and futures is the key. Also, uh, depending on the country where you live, um, certainly in the US, you have tax advantages trading futures versus trading stocks for intraday trading. You pay less taxes. So, you know, most of us when trading for intraday trading, we focus on those highly leveraged markets, okay? But just like I said, we'll need to talk more about Forex. We will certainly need to talk about stocks and ETFs too. That's for sure, okay? Anyway, so just, just to all speak the same language here. And again, it was a little bit of a long intro today. But I think it was important, especially because today is our last day, uh, talking about intraday in this first pass, okay? Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, JY, any YouTube for scanner setting? Well, I have a good news and a bad news. Uh, this, this, the explanations that I gave for how to set your scanners are spread it across a collection of videos. And to be honest, uh, I don't know which ones exactly, right? So if I was to ask you to go back and watch all the recordings, you may have to watch multiple hours to get uh, the response of how the scanners are set up properly. That's the bad news. What's the good news though? Well, the good news is that we have those files uh, that you could import into Trestation uh, and it will replicate the scanners the same way I have them myself. So, you know, if you were to send an email to us to reach at tradewithufos.com uh, and you just wait uh, patiently uh, for a few hours or maybe until tomorrow, something like that, uh, you will receive an email back uh, with the scan file that you can then import into Trustation and magic, magic, your scanners are right there. Okay? So uh, you could do that. Uh, Ray and Bojan, I, I hear your comment there when I was talking about trade management. I see that. Uh, Ray, I Jose, I'm a beginner in trading Forex. Do you have any suggestion where I can learn about this method that you are using for trading or this UFO apps method? Uh, yes. So for trading Forex, really the method, because it's a 24 hour market, it's leverage, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of like Forex and futures is brother and sister. It's like two assets, which in one hand are very different because one is centralized trades in the, in the exchange, such as the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The other one is decentralized. You buy the euro and maybe you are purchasing the euro via a broker and you get filled, you know, using a bank in Australia. So you never know. It's decentralized. But at the same time, uh, because they are uh, 24 hours and leverage, you know, it's kind of brother and sister. It's very, very similar, you know, the type of trading you could do. So uh, I would say that everything I've been teaching for futures applies to Forex. So if you were to watch those recordings that are marked as intraday one, intraday two, intraday three, and today intraday four, uh, basically you will get your methodology to trade Forex. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that with Forex, we, we don't have access to share, okay, shares and ticks, okay? We don't have access to shares and ticks because share, share bars and tick bars only are only available if there is an exchange that provides you with that information. So because Forex is decentralized, there is no exchange. So what happens, consequence number one, you don't have share bars, you don't have tick, tick bars. So what do you do with, with Forex then? Well, first of all, with Forex, uh, you may remember that long time ago we said no using the two-minute time frame of Forex. We don't do that. It's too small. Okay, The minimum setup for you to use would be 60 and 5, right? That would be the minimum. 
So if I go back to, let me see, let me see, let me see. Mm, where do I have my time frames, my edge time frames? Here we go. So here are my edge time frames. Okay. Let me see. Here we go. So if I go back to my edge time frames, okay, all those time frames, if you look at it carefully, okay, all of this is futures markets. Okay, from top to bottom is all futures markets. Okay, and the time frames to be used are the two, the time frames to be used are the eight, and the time frames to be used are the 21. Okay, now uh, the two, the eight, and the 21 go together with, remember, we are using two time frames, right? In the methodology that we learn, we are learning to use the common time frame combined with the edge time frame, and optionally, the reactive time frame. So we are talking about a maximum of three time frames where most of the time, most of the times it's going to be two. So for a, for common time frame, we use the 15 minute time frame when when you when you when you use the two as the edge time frame. We use the 60 minute time frame when you use the eight as an edge time frame, and we use the 240 minute time frame when you use the 21 minute as an edge time frame. That was the plan, and this applies to futures. So if you were to do that to Forex, okay, so basically what you do for Forex is that everything below here, you're going to have to ignore it because you don't have share bars or tick charts for Forex. So you, if you were to use the 15, you would use the 2, but we just said no 2. So therefore, forget about this for Forex, okay? If you use the 60, you would use the 8, okay? You would use the 8. If you were to use the 240, you will want to use the 21. Okay? That's that's how you would do it with Forex. Um, now, this is if you use the common time frame and the edge time frame. The common time frame would be the 60. The edge time frame would be the 8. Or if you choose to use 240 as a common time frame, you would then use the 21 as the edge time frame. Okay? Now, what if you want to use reactive time frames? Well, Again, as I said, we need to talk more about Forex, okay? But just to give you a quick answer, so at least you could practice it uh, um, for, for Ray. Uh, what you will want to do is to grab two FIB numbers below. So you got eight, the next one is five, and the next one is what? Well, the next one is three. So you would use 60, eight, and three. Uh, what if you do 21? Well, if you do 21, the next FIB number is 13, and the next FIB number is 8. So you would do 21 and 8, right? So you would do 240, 21, and 8, or 60, 8, and 3. So 60 would be your common time frame, 8 would be your edge time frame, and 3 would be your reactive time frame if you choose to be conservative and use a reactive time frame. Uh, 240 would be your common time frame, 21 would be your edge time frame, and 8 would be your reactive time frame if you choose to be conservative and use a reactive time frame. But unfortunately, everything related to ticks and shares could not be used in Forex because there is no exchange, so those time frames don't exist. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that you cannot load a tick time frame on, on the euro, okay? I, I could come in here and say, okay, euro. Okay, so here's the euro. I got the euro in a daily time frame. I could certainly input 1,000 ticks. I could do that. And if I input 1,000 ticks, guess what? I get a chart. Okay, it's loading. PD is going to be there in a minute. So I got a 1,000 tick chart for, for the euro. So I do get that information. But what's the problem? The problem I get is that that information, that tick information, it's coming only from the one source of data that fits my chart. So whichever broker I'm using to feed my chart, or if I use a, a for example, TradeStation is not a Forex broker. So TradeStation is using a third-party company to get Forex data feeds into the chart, uh, just like TradingView, okay? With TradingView, okay? With TradingView, when you load, for example, the Euro, okay? Uh, and you click Forex, Okay, it's taking a little bit of time for whatever reason. Here we go. So you can have the euro with FXCM, the euro with Oanda, the euro uh, 
uh, which is an aggregate data feed uh, pro pro provided by the ICE, and then the euro coming from Gain Capital, which is Forex.com. So you have four euros. It's all the euro. And, you know, the difference will be you know, just, you know, a few, a few pips here and there. The difference are going to be minor, but really uh, every one of those data feeds are going to be different. So what, what, what does that mean? That if you load a 1,000 tick chart on, on, on the euro on TradeStation, that means that basically you end up with the ticks provided by that source of data, which does not represent accurately the ticks provided or executed in the Forex market as a whole because there is no exchange that monitors that information because it's a decentralized product. So in other words, even though you could use tick bars, you know, you should not because you would be using partial information. It would not be, a, it may or may not be representative of of, of, the, of that particular market, right? And um, then it, it will lead to random outcomes and you don't want that in trading, okay? So again, for Forex, basically you are limited to time frames based on time and you would use it the way I had explained earlier, okay? And hopefully this allows you at least to put some practice in uh, and so on, uh, and, uh, and yeah. So Mark, uh, could you tell us which forex brokers uh, you are using or which one should we use in the US now? Yeah, I mean, Oanda uh, is, a, is a good choice, I would say, uh, because of multiple reasons. Uh, uh, it's a pretty decent broker, has been, in the market for many, many years, it's well-regulated. It seems, seems to be made of people that are quite serious and they don't have breached too many times regulation and stuff like that. So they seem serious people, which, you know, the Forex world could be a little bit of a wild west, especially in certain countries with lack of regulation. Uh, Oanda is located worldwide. He's regulated and licensed in many places in the world. And uh, they seem like a good broker. They provide a decent leverage, etc. So it's, it's nice. You can also connect Oanda directly uh, to your TradingView uh, platform if you use TradingView. So it, all of this makes it quite uh, handy. Okay? And, and it's good. But really, there's no right or wrong. Is that making sense? It's, uh, it's more about, you know... Uh, what spreads they give you, what leverage they give you, it's more about convenience, okay? Because with Forex brokers, you know, I mean, um, how do we put it? With, for example, if you were to trade options, right? And, uh, you know, options is a, is a product that by definition is m less liquid compared to other products because it's a derivative product, right? So by definition, a derivative will always be less liquid because it derives from something, right? So it, it cannot be as liquid as the, as the thing. So, so what happens? Um... Uh, you may you may find a big difference when it comes to executing via uh, TradeStation compared to uh, interactive brokers versus uh, Thinkorswim, uh, and you may find a difference in the quality of the execution, and therefore you may want to use broker B instead of broker A, because even though maybe broker B has higher commission, well, in the end, you get a better price with the options in most trades. And if they had such a routing system, that does give you an edge on the price you get, then I would say then it makes sense that we spend time talking about brokers and, you know, we pick the best, right? Because you get a better execution all the time. But with Forex, really, the execution is going to be about the same for everybody. That market is so large, you know, liquidity is so massive. It's not going to be that big as a problem. The problem with the Forex brokers, really, is more on the side of are they reliable people or are they people planning for fraud? Right? Are there are people planning to build a company and then fake bankruptcy and live with your money? Right? That's kind of like the, the risk because there is no centralized exchange and therefore forex brokers are less. Even though there is regulation, forex brokers are less um, under the radar, if you wish, compared to centralized products brokers such as f options or futures, for example. Right? So, um, you know, when, when you when you ask me, Mark, about which, which forex brokers you like, I mean, certainly it's a very, very good question, but really it doesn't matter much as long as you're using a, a stable company that is healthy finance-wise and especially that their philosophy is not about, you know, finding loopholes and breaking the law every day, right? So uh, in that sense, you know, reviews and stuff like that make a lot of sense. Companies that have been in the market for many, many years normally will give you a better guarantee compared to a brand new broker that just showed up uh, out there in the market, gives you 500 to one leverage, and you're like, oh my God, this broker looks amazing. Yeah, on paper it does, but what are they really trying to do, right? Are they really trying to be profitable or are they trying to build a business to be sold or, or 
run away with your money. There are certain countries some, in some places in the world where these things happen all the time. Countries such as the UK or, or the US or Australia, uh, Singapore, etc., are very well regulated and these things don't happen often. But there are other countries that are in the world such as, for example, uh, Cyprus, countries in the Middle East, countries in Africa, where there is much less regulation. And, you know, some brokers are very good, actually, but some brokers, you know, uh, are just planning to do something a little naughty and uh, they end up getting people in trouble. Okay, so that's that's where um, Forex brokers, that's, that's what you should focus on, okay? Uh, yeah, Moshi, hear you. Uh, yeah, you cannot, I mean, you cannot have a, a Buna, you cannot have the UFOs with Oanda, okay? You cannot have the USO, UFOs with, with Oanda uh, within their platform, but you could have the UFOs in TradingView, okay? And then when it comes to trading, okay, when it comes to trading, as you can see, okay, you can connect them with Oanda, and then you do the whole execution Okay, with TradingView, uh, but all of this is rooted to Oanda, and therefore, uh, you know, uh, your broker is technically Oanda. And by the way, TradingView is amazing. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many of you have been using it, but it's amazing, guys. You have tools. So you have tools here, for example, where you could uh, define a long position, okay, just by clicking in a place, okay, and, you know, so you adjust where you want the entry, where you want the stop, where you want the target. Okay, that's simple. So you buy in the green, stop is below, target is the red. Okay, and then you just come in here, right click. Okay, and then you, you can place your order. Create a limit order. Right, and now next thing you know, it's opening here with entry, stop and target. Click buy, done, you're in. Well, you, you still need to uh, decide the size, you know, how many micro lots, how many mini lots. So it's super easy to place orders to execute and so on. And if you have TradingView connected to Oanda, the whole execution goes through Oanda, but you never had to even open the Oanda platform, okay? Many other people uh, out there, uh, they use other brokers. The, the, the classical, classical, classical Forex broker out there provides a MetaTrader 4 as a trading platform or MetaTrader 5. So what would you do? Well, then you would have to run two, com two, two softwares. In one hand, you would have your browser with TradingView, such as I am doing at the moment. And then you would have a separate window with MetaTrader. Or maybe you don't even have MetaTrader on your computer. You have MetaTrader on your phone. And then when it comes to placing the order, right? So you look at your TradingView and you're like, okay, wait a minute. Um, show indicator last value label. And when you do that, Notice what happens here on the right. So you get to see the values for your entry, stop, and target, isn't it? So what will you do now? With this information in front of you, you go ahead, launch the MetaTrader 4 on your phone or your tablet, place the order, and you're done. So, you know, that's another way uh, to look at it. Same story if you use, let's say you are doing a trade with options with Think or Swim or or with interactive brokers. You do your analysis, your planning with TradingView, and then with the other platform, either on your phone or as another application on your computer. You can, you, you can put them next to each other. It's just like if you if you take your trade station, you put it on the right, and then you get your TradingView. Sorry, guys, I just clicked on the wrong place. Sorry for that. And you, here we go. And you get, Sorry, guys, I'm still clicking in the wrong place here on my computer screen. Good. And and then you get your uh, trading view uh, on the left side. So what do ha what happens? Now you, you have your trading view where you are doing all your analysis, right? And then on the right, you have your trade station where maybe here in trade station, the only thing you are using is uh, your order bar for you to place an order, right? So you did your analysis on the left, you placed it on the right. I got trading view on the left and I got trade station on the right. It could be trading view on the left and... Interactive brokers on the right, trading view on the left, think or swim on the right. Okay. Again, all of this is very personal. I'm just trying to be a little visual here for you guys. Uh, I'm not saying anything magic either. It's quite simple stuff, but being simple, it's quite uh, efficient. Okay. Good. Uh, yes. And Marcus, uh, last comment here. Uh, I use Ducas Copy is okay as well in my opinion. Yes, Ducas Copy is a good broker. They are an ECN. 
Uh, they have a good reputation. They've been in the market for a long time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's another good player that you could use. Okay, guys, I, I just had a, a little funny error message on my side. Uh, would you mind, guys, to confirm to me that you still hear my voice properly and everything is correct? Just to make sure everything is good. I believe so, but just in case. Okay, wonderful. Cool, okay, guys, so let's continue. Um, I mean, uh, I did divert a little bit from where I was going as I was starting the session, but at the same time, uh, your questions are very, very good and of course need to be answered. So hopefully all of this is now having us 100% focus on what we are doing, okay? So um, we have a few things to discuss. Um, first of all, again, the, the key subject for today is going to be the trade management, okay? And I'm going there. But very quickly, I want to also uh, review a few more things. When it comes to rule number one, which is about understanding the trend, okay? And is the trend strong or weak, okay? And we are doing that on the left with the moving average and also looking at the DMI. Is it green on the top? Is it red on the top? Okay, so we are looking at we are looking at that. And the, the purpose why we do that, it's because we need to know what is the high probability side of the market. Okay, should you be long, should you be short? And then once you know if you should be long or short, then let's find a good entry, right? But instead of just find an entry and let's hope I am in the right side, okay? So we talked about that on the very first day. That was was that was one of the purpose for step one, uh, you know, which we call the view, serve the trend, up, down, you know, all those names that we give it, you know, we'll, we'll come back with a final name at some point. So uh, now what we added in recent times was also that uh, when looking at the trend, we... Uh, divided that trend condition instead of two possibilities, which is uptrend, downtrend, we actually bro broke it down into four possibilities, which is strong, weak, up, and down. In other words, strong, uptrend, weak, uptrend, strong, downtrend, weak, downtrend. And the reason, the reason why this was important is because it has an impact on rule two, which is defining the, defining the target strategy. Okay, it has an importance on rule two, which is defining the, the, the target strategy. Yep, I hear you guys. Uh, I was just reading your comments. Uh, it, it has an importance on reading the target strategy, on defining the target strategy, because, you know, again, and, and I just said this at the beginning of the session today, isn't it? I said, sometimes you get into a trade, you see all those beautiful profits kicking in, you see a lot of green, you are so happy, happy, happy. Next thing you know, you never move your stop, you never collected profits, and the market starts moving aggressively against you, you end up getting out for a very deceiving profit, right? And it, the, this situation probably means that you didn't have a good exit. You didn't have a good target. It's that simple. It's not like the market wanted to hurt you. I mean, the, the market doesn't even care about us. Okay, we are so small compared to the size of the market. Uh, the market doesn't care if we got in or we didn't get in. Okay, so, but when the market moves so fast about us, uh, against us, uh, you know, it gives you, that, it may give you that impression. And the reality is that maybe the reason why is because you didn't set the target properly. Okay, I mean, there is another reason uh, that could be which is that a new institutional player, a new big guy, uh, showed up and started moving the market in the opposite direction. And if that's the case, you know, then of course you will not reach your target, okay? And you may even get stopped out. And that's why we use stops, okay? If we knew for sure every throw was going to be profitable, we use stops. But the, the goal here is our probabilities. What we want to do is to minimize the probability of being stopped out, and we want to maximize the probability of reaching our targets. That's what we want to do. So having the target in the right place makes a lot of sense. And having the target in the right place has a lot to do with the trend, right? If we are in a trending environment, what do we know about trend? We know trends tend to last. Well, if the trend to last, let's have our target very far away. But wait a minute. What if it's not such as a powerful trend? Well, it may tend to last for little or it may tend to last but move very slowly. Well, if that's the case, then we may not reach our target. So, so what we did is to define a methodology to set the target where if the trend was strong, we would allow ourselves to have further away targets. If the trend was weak, we would then allow ourselves to have targets only if those targets were nearer to our entry 
uh, because it would not be realistic. It would be too hopeful to set further away targets if the trend is weak. Because if the trend is weak, it's either it's going to take a while to get there if you get there, which is not likely, and probably what's going to happen is that the trend is going to reverse. Uh, that's why it's weak. And therefore, you may never get to your target. So again, it was important for us to go deeper into step one uh, to understand better not only if the trend is up or down, but also if it's strong or, strong or weak. So we can have a more effective way on how to set targets. Okay? Uh, and, and we talked about all of that. Okay. Apart from that, we also talked about having a safety target or not having a safety target, okay? which we talked about the pros and the cons of that. Uh, you know, I personally, and now I'm just sharing me, okay? uh, um, I, I always use safety targets you know, because um, it allows me to take more trades. Okay? Reaching safety target is normally something that happens quickly, if you're right. And the moment you reach safety target, you have removed the risk of the trade. In other words, you cannot lose anymore. So what happens now? Well, now the door is open for you to take as many trades as you want. Um, right? Where if you don't have a safety target and you were to take as many trades as you want, and all those trades were to turn and move against you, you may end up with a massive pain in your account. And I personally don't like that. So if you were to take only one trade at a time, maybe you don't need a safety target. But if you are like me, that you are more in the... Um, conservative side of taking profits because I'm not conservative trading but I'm conservative taking profits or you are uh, in the aggressive side of willing to take many trades at the same time uh, well then safety targets may make a lot of sense to you okay and this is what something that we do mathematically speaking where we just look at what's the risk of the trade if the risk of the trade is one point then our safety target is one point away that's simple mathematical calculation and we just take half of the position out at target one so the trade is now free of risk of course this will uh, reduce uh, the net profit of the trade and therefore impact and hurt the reward to risk ratio for the trade but not a big deal you know if you are successful enough which you should if you apply the rules that we are discussing and, uh, and not only apply the rules, follow the rules with discipline. Uh, and also, um, you know, if, if you are trading the right products, you know, products that are liquid, centralized, or if not centralized, big products such as Forex, instead of trading um, non-regulated products such as binary options, for example, right? Just one quick second, guys. Good. So um, this is kind of like the summary of what we know at this point. Okay, but we need to get a little deeper. Okay, and uh, of course uh, there are a few things that we need to talk about here. Okay, which is uh, entry. I mean, we never talked about entry, even though you have seen me enter trades many times. For almost every Tuesday, we are executing trades, so you've seen me do that. So. We may not even need to talk about entry in the sense that you've seen it, but I do want to talk about it because uh, remember there there are those two different types of entries: enter with limit orders, or enter um, uh, in a reactive fashion. Okay, for the ones that you are more conservative and you're looking for more evidence, remember that. So we need to talk about the entry, and once you are in, then we need to tra talk about the trade management. Okay, we need to talk about trade management, which is the key subject for today. Uh, Marcus, uh, what's your thoughts about instead of having a safety target, move to stop to entry once one to one is in profit? Well, in my experience, Marcus, uh, definitely the mathematical effect of protecting the trade and the net result of the trade is exactly the same. You don't profit, you don't lose, it's a break even stop. Having said that, uh, my experience in trading uh, shows me that uh, when a market comes into a green UFO or a red UFO, for price to turn, sometimes you will get a few bounces out of that UFO. So price will come in, come out, come in, come out, come in, come out, and finally price moves in the opposite direction. Because for price to move up, you need to remove all the sellers. For price to move down, you need to remove all the buyers. And sometimes it's a process where visually speaking, if you observe the charts and the candles, you get to see these up and down until finally you get the move. So if you move your stop to break even too soon, uh, the risk is that 
in in that process of going up and down, you get stopped out and then the whole move happens without you on board. Okay, so I particularly prefer to take my safety target, not to move my stop until later based on other rules that we're going to cover today. Okay, this, this is my experience. And um, again, it's not a magic formula. It also has pros and cons. I basically phrase... I, ju I basically phrase the the, um, the pros to you, but it also has count, cons, right? Uh, what is the con? Well, I reduce half from position size. So if I get to my target, I, I made less because I got to my target with half the size. Where in your case, if you move the stock to uh, stop to break even and you get to your target, you made a whole profit with a full size. So that's your pro, where your con would be that you, you will get stopped down more often than me uh, if I don't move the stop. Okay, so my pro is getting stopped out less often, but what's my con? Well, my con is that when I get to the target, I got less size, so I make a lesser profit. So who is going to be in a better position? Well, it's very difficult to say. I don't know. Okay, uh, both cases make sense. There is a lot of protection built in. Both actions are done in a way where you protect your account. You can take more trades at the same time. Both actions actually make a lot of sense. Okay, but again, just based on experience, uh, you know, moving your stop too soon to break even will lead you to lots of frustration, okay? And and the reason why I don't do it, because I just said it's quite equival equivalent, the reason why I don't do it is because the psychological component, okay? So first, if you take some profit out of the table when you get to your safety target, uh, putting on the side the benefits for trade management I just phrased, there is another psychological benefit, especially when you are new to trading, which is you priced yourself, Right? When you move stop to break even, you haven't priced yourself. When you take a safety target, you have priced yourself. So yeah, if you go deep into the math, it's the same. But if you think about it as a human person would, uh, you think about this, the emotional impact of it, uh, You know, the positive energy that this brings to you uh, is much more impactful compared to the uncertainty you still have if you move stop to break even. Right? Uh, if you move stop to break even, you get stopped out. Many times you'll find yourself saying, Oh, I know it. I so knew it. Why did I do it? Right? And that negative energy may impact how you plan other trades. Where if you take your profit uh, at safety one, it gives you that peace of mind. It gives you that feel that, you know what? I'm doing a good job. I'm pricing myself. It's very positive. And on top of that, if you end up losing on the trade, you, instead of feeling like I knew it, you're going to be like, thank God I took my safety target. Right? So it's much more positive from a psychological point of view. Okay? And, and by the way, uh, apart from talking about techniques on how to trade, you may have noticed, okay, and we will more and more and more, also talk about trading psychology because it's key. You cannot separate trading techniques, trading apps, trading markets, and you, okay? We are human, okay? And that's, that's a beautiful thing. And it's such a pain to be a trader, to be human, isn't it? So, uh, you know, there are many little tricks like what I just said that help us to have a much more relaxed way on how to trade. Uh, and that's where I'm, I'm bringing you guys, okay? Anyway, guys, great questions. Love it. So let's keep going. Uh, entry, okay? So now that we did step one, which is define is the right action is to be long or to be short. What is the right side? What's the right side of the market you should be in? And now that you have looked at defining the target, so you now know, uh, you know, if there is room for profit, if the trade makes sense, you know, maybe you realize that, you know, you are about to have the trend totally reversed because even though the trend is up and strong, when you start looking for targets, you realize it's, it's, it's you know, you, you are, you know, almost touching uh, the rival UFOs, you know, in, in the higher time frames, And that trend has no room to continue expanding. So even though the right side of the market is long, well, yeah, the right side of the market is long just for a little bit. And, you know, you may decide I'm not even taking the trade, right? So let's say everything is good and you can see the red UFOs, you know, assuming it's an uptrend, you can see the red UFOs far away. Or if it's a downtrend, you can see the green UFOs far away. So then step three is when you now want to plan, okay, plan uh, your entry. Okay, that's when you will plan the entry. There is no need for you to plan the entry unless you know the type of entry you want and you have confirmed there's room. Okay. Now, when planning the entry, okay, we're gonna just like what uh, we did uh, the other week, uh, we're gonna have two options. Okay. 
uh, use a more conservative uh, entry style which adds more evidence okay and that you are reading my mind isn't it that implies the use of a reactive time frame okay and we talked about that last week and unfortunately i haven't demonstrated that properly yet over our tuesday session uh, I, I was about to demonstrate the other day and then i got i don't know if you remember on last tuesday i had a little um slowing down on my computer and then i decided to to reboot thread station and and i uh, then i rushed it a little bit and then i kind of missed uh, I, I i forgot between us i forgot to to demonstrate uh, the the use of the reactive time frame so i will do that in two future sessions so you get to see it but basically basically what you will do is okay so let's say you wanted to enter okay, let's say that was the case right that we have the smp uh, let's say we have the average 29.38, right? And uh, let's say we got 29.38, we got the green UFO, and when price comes in, you know, you want to enter the trade, well, if you are not gonna use the reactive time frame, that's it, you're in, okay, you're in, done. You are in the trade, that's it, right? But let's say you tell me, I want more reaction, I want evidence. So what would you do now? Well, you would be looking at those two time frames here in the bottom, okay, the two reactive time frames, and you would do nothing unless unless a UFO was to form. Okay? So if something like that was to form, okay, you would be okay, I mean. Okay? That's what you need. Of course, I'm using blue color to do the drawing. You would need it to be green when long. You would need it to be red when short. But you would wait for all that evidence, okay? Now, once you got the evidence, and by the way, before I, I, I give you the two choices on how to enter this thing, uh, could you please, guys, give me confirmation that you are with me on, on, on what I mean by reactive time frame and getting that reaction when price got into the UFO and now you have the reaction? Everybody can confirm that to me? Very good. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Not clear, Orlando. Okay, so let me explain that again. So, um, so let me see if we if we can be because to be honest, we have a great example in front of us on the screen. Okay, so uh, we have the the average price is getting to where the average is, and above on our edge time frames, we have that uh, market that market is entering a ufo isn't it so you have this market entering a ufo while we are hitting the average line so it's time to get long okay everybody with me on that orlando could you please confirm that you are with me it's time to get long at this moment in time if you didn't know anything about reactive time frames are you with me that it's time to get long Okay, I know we have a little bit of delay with the YouTube stream. So yeah, perfect. So Orlando, so you got it, right? So what would you do now? Well, uh, if, if you are not a person who wants to wait for any confirmation, any evidence, any anything, you just get into the trade and that's it. That, that's what we have been doing almost every single session on those Tuesdays. Okay, when we do short-term -term trading, uh, get together short-term, -term, that's what we do all the time, all the time, all the time, right? But what's another choice? Okay, well, let's say you tell me, wait a minute, I know it's time to get in. But the reason why it's time to get in is because I am assuming, okay, I am assuming that I will have unfilled orders waiting to get filled, which they should be there because we have our green UFO, right? But again, they are not always there. If they were, if they were always there, our stats, you know, if I activate stats here, Let's say you look at the five minute time frame of this is the euro, whatever. So if I, you know, stats are 70%. What does that mean? That 70% of the times we get the reaction we expect. In other words, 70% of the times the unfilled orders we were expecting are there. But we don't get that reaction all the time. 
there is 30% of the times in this case, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, there is 30% of the time in this case where we don't get the reaction and you would get stopped out. And why is that? Well, there is a very simple way to understand why is that, which is the on-field orders that were available were cancelled. I mean, do we receive a phone call from Goldman Sachs when they cancel the orders? We don't. That would be amazing. But we don't receive a phone call. So what do we do? We use stops in case they cancel the order so we get stopped out. Now, big institutions, the big players, they don't tend to cancel the orders because they are not in the business of canceling the orders. They are in the business of getting their orders filled. That's how they profit. They cannot profit unless they are exposed. And to be exposed, you need to be filled. So uh, they don't cancel the orders often, but sometimes they do. Um, it could be a news. It could be whatever. It could be they change their mind. It could be they decided they found a better opportunity and they, they replace uh, they cancel that order to get that capital working somewhere else, somewhere else in a different market. So, uh, you know, so you may be thinking, wait a minute, I got the on-field orders, okay? These are the on-field orders already available in the market. That's giving me an edge, even though it's not going to be 100%. It is giving me a market edge. That's great. That may be reason enough for me to get a trade. You may say, wait a minute, on top of that edge, I have another edge, which is the fact that, you know, uh, those institutions... Uh, you know, they may add more orders because the computers that the big players, hedge fund managers, etc., use to do their trades, all the quants, etc., you know, they may be adding many on-field orders that are new on-field orders entering the market thanks to that moving average, okay? I mean, you see it all the time, isn't it? We talked about that a million times. You see it here, for example. You see, you see it many times. You don't see it all the time, but you see it many times. So what happens? Talking about edge, okay? If you were to not to look for any evidence, it would certainly not be crazy to take the trade. We, we've been talking about that for weeks and weeks and weeks because you have unfilled orders in the market waiting to get filled, plus potential for new unfilled orders to kick in. So all of to, all of this together, you know, is giving you a high probability trade, and you take it. And you you and 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 you know, I, I do, and it's fine. You know, it's how you trade. You know, you take certain risk. You know, probabilities are on your side. You execute. Done. But let's say you tell me, okay, I, all of these make sense, Jose, right? But you, you you talk to me and you say, Jose, but you don't understand. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a very, very risk-averse person. I'm the, the the king and the queen of the perfectionist, right? Or something like that, right? And, and you know, uh, all of these makes a lot of sense. And when you explain it, oh, my God, you know, I so get it and everything. But, you know, then it's time for me to click the button. And, you know, I, I look at my, my finger about to click the mouse. And, you know, my whole hand, my whole arm is shaking. I'm scared. I don't feel the confidence to click the button, right? So what do I need? Well, I need more comfort for my psychology. That's what you need if you were to be that guy, right? And and probably some of you are, okay? Because, or, or by the way, probably you, probably maybe some of you are like that at the beginning part of your trading life. And five years later, you are not like that anymore because you have traded so much that, you know, confidence is not a problem anymore. Uh, but at the beginning, it may be, right? And again, uh, we you you cannot fight your personality. Just like you cannot fight the market, you cannot fight your, yourself either. You need to make some, you need to trade in a way that is compatible with you. So let's say you are that guy. You tell me, okay, you got unfilled orders, you got potential for more unfilled orders to come in, but I need more evidence. So what's the evidence? Well, that's when those little windows on the, on the right, bottom right, come into place, okay? that's where we're going to get the evidence from. Those two time frames in the bottom. Because if what's happening on the chart, what's happening in real time during market hours, now, of course, the market is closed. And now, by looking at this chart, you see a new UFO form. And price starts moving out of the UFO. Okay, And that, instead of blue, shows green. In that chart on the left or the chart on the right. It doesn't matter if it's both charts or one, okay? If any of those two charts in the bottom were to show you a new green UFO after price came into UFO on the edge time frame and price starts bouncing out of the average and therefore, as it's going up, is leaving behind a new tiny green UFO on this tiny time frame, which we call it reactive this is what i'm going to call evidence so you thought there were unfilled orders you thought the average would potentially increase more unfilled orders to kick in well the only way 
that new UFO below is formed is that everything I said is true. If the unfilled orders were cancelled, the market would go down. If the average didn't produce new unfilled orders, the market would go down. And if the market was to go down, it's no way you would have a green UFO form. But if you do have a green UFO form, after you hit the average and the UFO above in the edge time frame, and you do have a new green UFO form in the reactive time frame, that is a piece of evidence that tells you, Orlando, you were right. You were expecting this to happen, and guess what? It is happening, and not only it is happening, we are now having new traces. Okay, So many orders have been added or filled that we are now having traces of orders that are not even being filled on so much buying that is happening. Price is moving up, leaving again unfilled orders. So that's evidence. Again, could everything be cancelled and something happen? Of course. But now you got evidence on top of a scenario, a setup, that is high probability by definition, based on what we covered, based on what we've seen. And you have seen the trades that we execute on the Tuesdays, okay? We make money doing that. So in the end, we're not dreaming alive. We're not dreaming awake. We are, we, are, we are talking about something, let's call it tangible. Well, on top of that, now we are adding evidence on top of something tangible. Is that making sense? So what's the downside? The downside is that if you do all of this, it's more time-consuming. Time it's more tedious. You have to be in front of the screen. You have to watch it. You will miss trades. Sometimes the reaction will be so strong that that's, that stock will enter the green UFO, bounce and move in the opposite direction, right? And it never gave you the green UFO here because either all orders got filled and it moved or it moved so fast that the algo didn't have the time to identify anything. And therefore, uh, you know, you never took the trade and you missed the move. That's a downside. But what's the beauty? The beauty is that if you were to wait for all of this to happen, now you have a bigger evidence, a greater evidence of all the setup and all the scenario that I have explained using words, all the story behind the scenes, right? You have a greater evidence of it. And therefore, if you were to execute that trade, you are more likely to make a profit. Is that making sense? For the conservative traders in the room, uh, you know, that should bring some peace, some, uh, you know, more relaxed type of mindset that may allow you to execute more happily, okay, and and therefore uh, experience better results. Uh, so let me let me take a look at your, your comments here, guys, and I have a couple things I need to say, and then we'll move into the trade management. So, um, and I, I need to give you a break as well. So we'll, I'll do that right now, okay? Let me take a look at the comments first. So... Mark, on my trade station, that UFO is already gone. Uh, that's interesting. That is interesting. And if we have the same settings, that should not be the case. So the only way this is happening is that we have different settings. Okay, uh, I'm using 0 0.5 uh, for calibration, Mark. I'm not sure what you're using. Mario, uh, you read my mind. Thank you for that. Uh, Orlando, oh, okay, you guys are looking at... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And by the way, remember what I said. Uh, two weekends from now, we'll talk about calibration, okay? And I need you all to be present because um, many of you have been playing with calibration, experiencing with it, and doing different things with calibration. And, you know, I would like to have a very, very, very advanced conversation about that, okay? But not today, of course, because uh, it's not the day for that, okay? Uh, Good. Yes, Subhash, you're reading my mind. Good. So, getting there. So, again, let me let me finish this conversation about uh, the reactive time frame and entering with evidence. Uh, we'll have a break and then we'll come back for the trend management, okay? Uh, so, um, first, problem number one. And it's not like I want to add problems, okay? But maybe I should say case number one. So, case number one is... You see the UFO forming here in the bottom part, right? So what do you do? Do you take the trade at this moment in time, right there in, inside the, 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 the little square? Or do you wait for price to come to come back to the UFO? And once price come back to the UFO, you take the trade in the second square, and then potentially you catch the move. 
So why should you do? Should you take the trade where the number one is? And that's a pretty big number one. Or should you take the trade where the number two is? Right? What should you do? Should you wait? Should you not to wait? You have the evidence you take the trade with a market order or you have the evidence you plan a trade with a limit order with a tiny UFO. And if you plan the trade with a tiny UFO number two, subhash question is, okay, so what, where do you place the stop? Do you place the stop under this UFO or do you place the stop under that UFO, right? So where do you place the stop, okay? So you can see that, you know, every new avenue you open creates a collection of new rules, okay, of new rules uh, for you to apply, okay? And uh, you could get crazy, you know, uh, exploring rules and getting very, very original and all of this, okay? So again, the, the, the key for success, my friends, is that you have powerful rules, but they need to be simple. And then you follow them with discipline, okay? So uh, even though I'm adding complexity by giving you choices, uh, you know, my ultimate intention is to keep it simple. So let's see how we can make this simple, okay? So going back to number three, plan your entry. So number three, you can use a more conservative entry style with more evidence, okay? Number two, you can just not uh, wait for any sort of evidence and use a limit order, okay? If you use a limit order, okay, you should uh, plan your stop to be where? Where, sh where should you plan your stop to be? Well, if your entry, if your entry is here, your stop should be under the UFO. Oops, sorry for that. If your entry is here, your stop should be under the UFO, correct? Now, we have seen, and again, perfect example in front of us, we have seen, this happened to us the other day on Tuesday, that even though the bottom part of this UFO is 38.25, the fact is that 38.25 is somewhere, somewhere here. That's 38.25. And the problem is that that is in the middle of another UFO, which has... Uh, on-field orders all the way to 37.75. So if you were to be in a situation like that, even though the reason why you took the trade may have been that UFO, the one on the left, which is the two-minute time frame in this case, remember, any of the edge time frames that give you an entry, as long as, as it's lining up with the average, you would take it, right? So in this case, let's say it was the one on the left, the two-minute. So, you know, you could have planned the trade using the uh, the UFO on the left, but when it comes to setting your stop, your stop should be located in the worst case possible. Okay, so I want to introduce here the term worst case. When it comes to setting your stop, okay, when it comes to setting your stop, okay, you, you're gonna look for the worst case location. So the worst case location is what? The worst case location needs to be white space, okay? And it needs to be white space in all edge timeframes. Think about it. If I go back to my chart and I look at 38.25, so if I go one tick below, it's going to be 38. 38 is white space in the two minute time frame. But 38, it's not white space in the 2,584 share bar. Therefore, 20, 20, 29, 38 is not the worst case. So what would I do? I will look at 37.75 and I go one tick below, it's 37.5 and 37.5 is white space in the share time frame, is white space in the two minute time frame and is white space in the tick time frame. So where would you set the stop? It would be 2937.5. That is the worst case. So you set your stop where the worst case location is, which is the white space in all edge time frames. Everybody with me with that? And this is the answer to you, Subhash, that no matter 
if you're going to be using entry with a reactive time frame or not, your stop will be located where the worst case situation is. Remember, the reason why you are entering the trade with a reactive time frame is so you get evidence. But it doesn't mean that you are leaning against the reactive time frame all the way. The reason why you are using the reactive time frame is to get evidence that proves to you that the setup, the situation, the story behind the scenes you thought is happening in the real world. Does that make any sense? But don't go ahead and tell me, okay, wait a minute, Jose, but that would be amazing. Look, if I if I if I have a tiny UFO here. Let me redraw that. If I have a tiny UFO here, right? Like that. And now I got a little bit of a move. And that UFO, let's say that UFO begins at um, um, 37, let's call it 38. Okay, so let's say let's say this begins uh, at 38 on the top, and the bottom and the bottom part of the UFO is uh, 37.75. So now, next thing you know, I got 38 on the top, right? 38 on the top, I got. 37, and this is pretty, you know, big fonts, okay? But it's okay. So 38 on the top, 37.5 below. So what's my risk? Well, my risk is two ticks, half a point. You're going to be like, okay, wait a minute. With half a point, I can purchase 75 contracts based on my account size. And if I'm right and I get to my target, okay, I just produced a 2,000% return in two hours. And you're going to be like, okay, great. That's the mathematics are fantastic. You are right. This is the right math. But what's the reality? The reality is that this is a very, very tiny UFO that represents tiny, tra tiny traces of some on-field orders to buy. It's not strong enough for you to rely on what step one is, which is a 15-minute trend. I mean, even though the trend is strong, you can see green all the way. Okay, all this chart is green, 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 green all the way. Notice how there have been times where price had to go under the average to finally go above the average. In other words, you need strong quantity of on-field orders to push the market in one direction. And a tiny, tiny time frame may not be strong enough. So it's okay to use a reactive time frame. But for the purpose of looking for evidence, what you don't want to do is to get all mixed up. And I'm not saying that's your case, but what you don't want to do is to get all mixed up. And next thing you know, uh, or fall into a little bit of greed and be like, oh, you know what? Now I'm going to use the reactive timeframes instead of the edge timeframes. And instead of using the 2,584 share bars, I'm just going to use the 610 because now you may be uh, overdoing it. Is that making sense? Uh, you went a little too far. Uh, and uh, you may be stopped out way too often. Is that making sense? Uh, you need more room between your entry and your stop to avoid stop outs. Okay, and again, the guy entering this trade on the right uh, took a risk from, let's say you, you got your entry at 29.40 and you got your stop at uh, 37, uh, at 37.5, uh, as we said before, uh, you are dealing with uh, 2.5 points of risk. Right, and if you're happy with the trade, then you take it. If you're not happy, then you don't take it. You go trade the Nasdaq, or you go pick something else, or you just wait for a new next UFO to form later, and hopefully it'll be a narrower UFO instead of so wide. But what you could not do is to make it up, and just because you would like your entry and your stop to be closer, right? You are just gonna ignore the edge time frames, ignore that, ignore these, okay, and just rely on the tiny UFO that may form in here on the reactive time frame. okay? So we want to make sure that you don't get kind of like confused, okay? Uh, even though that was a very good question, Subhash, and I know you're not confused, but I think it was a very, 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 very valid point. Uh, and, and I had to clarify that uh, and make sure you all understand that there is only one purpose for us to use the reactive time frames in the bottom. Only one purpose to use those two guys which is evidence. The plan of the trade is coming from the common time frame combined with the edge time frame. And we gain evidence with the reactive time frame.
okay? But we don't plan trades and certainly don't set stops based on the reactive time frame. That would end up very frustrated, very frustrating, believe me. Okay, so uh, anyway, let me give you a break, guys, okay? Because I need to go back into 3A and give you a little more insight into how to enter with more evidence uh, and then move into the trade management, which again is the key subject for today, even though everything we said is key because it's all key, guys. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, uh, I do need to do that. Okay, so I know there are a few questions in the comments box, but uh, I'll take care of them after we are back, because if I take care of them now, it's going to be another few minutes, okay? So break time, five minutes, we are back, and fi back in five, and we continue, guys.
so I know that you hear my voice. So quick yes, so I know that you hear me. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Very, very nice of you. Uh, very good. So let's restart. Um, I missed a few of your comments before. I would like to take it from here so I don't miss anything. Uh, Marcus, does anyone know how much the UFOs cost on TradingView? It's 34. 34. There is a website. I mean, in our website, you can see it very easily. Uh, there is a section called Join, and in that section, uh, you can see it very easily. Uh, Jose, are these time frames tailored specific to the, U to the ES? Yes, yes. Those time frames are specific to the ES. Uh, Bojan, we have this uh, collection of time frames, which are for all the futures markets. Okay, and feel free to take a screenshot if you wish. And uh, I would recommend you, if you haven't, to watch the prior sessions, okay? Uh, Jose, is there a reason why you do not use the traditional red green candles in your charts? Um, yeah, uh, because what matters to me to be red or green is the UFOs, not not the candles. So I really don't care about the color of the candles. Okay, I mean it's on one hand may look prettier, but uh, yeah, I, I like it better in a more neutral way, if you wish. So also it's it's a matter of uh, tricking your psychology too. Okay, if you get into a trade and uh, you know, market is falling hard and you see all those red candles, you may cancel your trade, mm, especially in early stages, you know, when you're more experienced, it doesn't impact you, but little tricks, psychology tricks, uh, and again, it's about focusing on what matters, and what matters is the UFOs, it's not the candles, right? So, um, let me see, let me see, John Clifford, if the bar of the DMI is half red, half green, Set the button is hard. Uh, uh, yeah, what matters, uh, what matters um, when it comes to the DMI is the top. Okay, so what matters is only the top. So, for example, if I go back in time, let me see if we got a little bit of mix at some point. So, for example, this one. Okay, you can see here there is a tiny bit of red on the top, right? Okay, so if there is a tiny bit of red on the top, it's red. If there is a little tiny bit of green on the top, it's green. For, for example, let me see if I find it, if I find an example. I mean, if it's all red, it's all red. If it's all green, it's all green, it's clear. But for example, this case where you have some green and some red, the top is red, so it's red, right? If let me see. For example, that one is mostly green, but the top is red. So it's red. If it was the opposite, that most is red and a little bit is green, then it's green. What matters is the top. Okay, that's what matters. What matters is the top. And funnily enough, I don't find any... Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not going to find anyone with the top being green, because the green is drawn on top of the red. So when the top is green, you see all green. Yeah, that's how it draws it. So re really what matters is that you look at the top, and the color on the top is what matters. If the color on the top is green, it's green. If the color on the top is red, even though it may be just a little bit of red, like this, this one here, then it's red. That's it, okay, it's that simple. Um, what else? Ray, Jose, isn't it excite, exciting though when price goes deep into the zone, verify new evidence, a place to consider other contracts due to reduce risk? Well, um, it's a strong assumption. Okay, it's a strong assumption uh, when you do, uh, you have added contracts because for you to know, I mean, for us to really speak the same language here, and, and I get your point, Ray, and I, I, I love the way you're thinking, but for you to get the confirmation of more contracts added, you would want to see the new UFO forming on your edge time frame. So if you had a new UFO forming here, 
and then price moves out of here, that's confirmation of contracts added, right? Uh, and But then you are too likely going to miss your trade. Uh, where if you were to see uh, a new UFO forming here on the reactive time frame, uh, what happens is that just, just because of a tiny vibration in the market, you know, price will come back and bounce and keep going, right? So, because that's a tiny time frame. So here you are much less likely going to miss the trade compared to if you were to wait for that evidence on the edge time frame. Okay, so get your point, like the concept, but if you were to do it, you would need to do it with the edge time frame. And this is increasing a little too much the probability of missing the trade. So that's why we have the reactive time frame to find this balance. And of course, it's not going to be perfect, but to find this balance where the amount of times you miss the trade is less, where the evidence you get is strong enough. It's not strong enough to get the, to take the trade by itself, as we said before. You want to you want to rely on the edge time frames, not the reactive. The reactive is there only for the purpose of reaching evidence. But at the same time, uh, you know, we are looking for the balance to try to not to miss too many trades. Okay. Good thoughts, uh, Moshi. Do you uh, Jose? Do you know of a DMI on the trading view that works simple like one you, you use? Yes. Yeah, with the trading view, uh, you have. Um, you can insert indicator and look for directional, type the word directional, so directional movement, okay, and when you do that, okay, it's going to give you that type of a, um, a, um, setup on the bottom, right? So you can go ahead and double click on it, uh, you know, you can change colors, okay, for example, blue for ADX. Uh, green for plus DMI, red for minus DMI. Okay, and that that would look much more like what I have myself on TradeStation. Okay, and then um, you can also play with a um, you know a, the the type of a graph that you're gonna use. Okay, so uh, I was using histogram, histogram. Okay, so you can do that. And then for the ADX, you can choose to disable it. So then it doesn't show. So if you were to do that, okay, uh, basically you have, you can do the thickness a little bigger as well. Okay, um, actually I'll do it all the way. So all the way thickness, right? And now when you zoom in, the way I zoom in in TradeStation, okay, you have the same thing. Okay, so when it's red, it's red. When it's green, it's green. It's the color on the top is what matters. Okay, so that's how you would do it. And now you end up with the same. So you need to do a little bit of adjustment manually, but then that's it. Then you have it. Cool. So, um, okay, so back to what we're doing. I believe oh, there is one more question coming from Orlando. Jose, what are your thoughts about trading after the market opens at 6 p.m. here in the USA? Uh, anytime is good to trade Orlando, okay? Especially if you're going to be using share bars and tick charts where all your candles are not depending on time. They are based on activity. Then all candles have the same weight at 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. It doesn't matter. So it's it's all good, okay? Now, having said that, of course, the speed of movement is different. Uh, and if you are a trader who likes speed, uh, the best time is to trade around the open, a little before the open, etc. That's why we do the get-togethers at... 9 a.m. Eastern time is kind of the, is the optimal time, okay? But it doesn't need to be that time. Any other time is good, okay? Good. So, guys, let's continue. Let's continue. So, we are talking about plan your entry, okay? And choice number one, uh, you know what? I'm just going to invert uh, the, the sequence, okay? So, choice number one is to not to wait for any sort of evidence and use a limit order, okay, to enter using the edge time frame UFOs, okay? That's option number one. Can can everybody give me a yes for me to know that you all understand option A on how to enter? You use any of the three charts on the top, any of the three edge time frame charts, and whenever price comes to a UFO and the UFO is lining up with the average, you get in. 
Okay, you get in with a limit order, so you just wait for a price to fall into it or rally into the into it, depending if it's a long or a short. And the moment price comes into the UFO, you take the trade. No time to wait. Everybody with me? Yes. Perfect. Now, choice B. Choice B is when you want to use a more conservative entry style, which adds more evidence. So now we use the reactive time frame. Okay? So using the reactive time frame means you wait for a new UFO to form. Okay? I'm going to call it an, an ally UFO to form. Okay? What is an ally UFO? Well, if you plan to be go long, an ally UFO is a green UFO. A rival UFO is a red UFO when you plan to go long. What if you plan to go short? Well, if you plan to go short, an ally UFO is red. And what is the rival UFO? Well, the rival UFO when you short is the green UFO. Okay? So you would use the reactive time frame, wait for a new ally UFO to form, okay? And from there, okay? And now you have two more options, okay? Which is uh, to use a market order and get filled immediately, okay? Use a market order and get filled immediately, or use a limit order with the entry price being the reactive the reactive time frame UFO price. Okay? In other words, I'll let you read it for a second, and then we'll, I'm, I'm going to go back to the chart and show you what I'm trying to express with words, okay? And, and again, what I'll do, okay, I'm just asking you a little bit of time for me to do this for you, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll produce some sort of visual, like a, um, a flow chart, okay? Or something like that, where I'll, I'll be putting it together in a way where all of this will be very easy to follow. But I also want you to have the the messy version of it, okay? The, 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 the version where I was almost improvise if you wish even though it's clear in my mind but the wording the way I'm typing it is kind of improvised and because you know I think it has a lot of value um, uh, in, in the sense of un un understanding the thinking process behind the scenes and remember I'm very very big into you guys understanding the why okay because you cannot be confident as a trader if someone gives you rules and you just follow the rules because someone gave them to you you need to understand why the rules are the way they are because we are adults and we do need to understand why we do things we do. When we are kids, we just follow what dad and mom say just because they said so, because they have the authority of being dad and mom. But when we are adults and we have autonomy and we have, you know, our own decision process and that we have the right to use it. So we do need to understand why, uh, you know, so, so that's, that's what we need, okay? Yes, yes, the height, absolutely, absolutely. Good. Perfect. Thank you, Orlando, as well. So, um, so how would that look like if we do, if we do that uh, last option in the bottom part, right? Uh, you know what? Let, let's do both. Let's begin with the market order. Okay. So the market order again. I'm gonna repeat myself a little bit. You were planning the trade. You identified the market coming to where the the average is. That was coinciding uh, with a UFO. That UFO was overlapping with another UFO. So you decided anywhere in that region, I want to enter, anywhere in that region, I want to enter because I got unfilled orders and potential of new orders to be added thanks to the average, right? And you say, okay, I'm in, right? But you say, okay, wait a minute. I'm in, but I'm very conservative. So I want more evidence. So then your eyes went to look at the reactive timeframes. Okay, and now you are looking at the reactive time frames and you're like, okay, let's wait for a new UFO form. And let's say that market is doing this, 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 nothing's happening. Let's say the other one here is doing this, 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 nothing's happening, this, this, nothing's happening. Shape is going to be kind of the same, maybe a little different, kind of the same, but nothing's happening. And because nothing's happening, price 
you know, is doing, when you see this candle, it's going down, up, down, up, and it's leaving a little bit of a week, but it's just doing something and you don't know what that thing is. But suddenly, in any of the time frames here below, you see a new UFO appear, magic, magic, a new candle updates, and magic, magic, you see green color. So what is this telling you? Evidence. You now have the evidence that you were looking for, if you are that guy, if you are conservative, which is okay, you, you got the evidence that you were looking for uh, that tells you that the story that you thought was happening behind the scenes is actually happening. And therefore, you are now ready to enter. So option one was to use a market order. So if you use a market order, okay, it means you will get filled at this price. Okay, just to make up an example, I'm going to say that price is 29.40. Okay, so let's say you are getting filled at 29.40. If you get filled at 29.40, right? If you get filled at 29.40 and your stop is 37.5, then all of this is your risk which is okay, okay? But the added risk of using a market order is that you may get slippage. So even though you see the current price on the, on the chart, you see it ticking at 39.40, you may get filled at 29.40.25, or you may get filled at 29.40.50. Don't think so, but you may get 0.50. You may get 0.25. So you may not get exactly... 40, which is what you want. You may get a little more, a little less. Uh, sorry, not a little less, a little more, okay? Uh, that's the, 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 the downside, but what's the beauty? Well, the beauty is that immediately you are in the trade, so you got the setup, you got the evidence, you're in the trade, and now if you're right, you profit, if you're wrong, you lose, that's it, right? So you don't miss it. And what's the problem of using option number two? If you use a limit order, okay, and you're waiting for price to come back to that ally UFO that form in the reactive time frame, that's where you may miss the trade. Okay, that's where you may miss the trade. Okay, because remember, the, the story was, you know, all of the above, okay, and now, you know, the market was doing whatever, was doing whatever, was doing something, nothing much was happening. Suddenly, 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 magic, magic, a UFO forms, okay, price is moving, and you're like, okay, time to enter. I got the evidence. But now, instead of entering at 29.40, which is up here, right? 29.40. Uh, you don't want to enter at 29.40. You want to wait for price to come back to this ally UFO that form in the reactive time frame, which to use a price, I'm going to call it 28.30. Uh, so 28.30 is maybe somewhere here. Did I just say 2830? I, I don't know how I'm thinking. 3850. <laughs> Sorry for that, guys. Let me say that again because I'm just listening to myself and I'm like, this makes no sense what I just said. So let's say the price is moving like that, right, that, right, like that, and then suddenly you have your UFO. Probably you guys are thinking, what's happening to Jose? Uh, you know, doing the classes on Sunday, not a good idea. <laughs> so anyway, so let's say this thing is moving, right? And instead of getting filled at 2940, okay, uh, you want to wait for this to come down, right? And so 29.40 is up here. This little drop in price until it gets to the UFO, right? If I was to draw the, the UFO band, it would be something like that, okay? This little coming down to the UFO band, basically, that's going to be price going to, let's call it, let's call it a uh, 29.40. 39.5, right? So instead of instead of 2940, okay, with a market order, okay, you would have got 2940. Now with a limit order, you are shooting for 2939.5, which is somewhere here. If your stop was still located here, well, that the distance between those two lines is your risk. So what's the beauty? You're going to have much less risk on the trade because you entered somewhere in between, 
okay, you enter somewhere in between, you're going to have much less risk on the trade. Uh, you have the evidence, which is more probably, we'll talk about that, okay? But what's the, what's the problem of doing this second type of action? Well, the problem is that you may not have this drop in price. Price after the UFO is formed, that market may keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, never came back, uh, and you never get to get uh, the little coming back to the zone, uh, and therefore you miss the trade, okay? And the other problem is that you have to be quick. You have to be very quick because this is going to happen the UFO forms, the ally UFO forms in the reactive time frames, and the coming back, if it happens, may happen super, super, super quickly. So you need to be super fast with your execution, and uh, therefore, um, it's going to be a little bit in the tricky side. Okay, So uh, you need to understand the pros and the cons of those two options for you to define where you are going to be. Uh, I think that probably the easier way to execute is either to go for option A, which is what I do myself all the time, or this option with a market order, because a market order is very easy to execute. You just need to click the blue button when you want to go long, or click the red button when you want to go short. Okay, it's super fast, okay? And that's it. Where doing that last option is probably the most ideal one, but even though it's very ideal, it's a little bit a utopia option, in the sense that, you know, there are so many things that need to happen and you need to be quick and you need to be fast. And so, you know, um, maybe a little a little problematic, okay? Now, there is one more pro, one more con I need to discuss with you. Um, again, psychology, okay? And I know we're talking about techniques, but remember, we cannot detach techniques and psychology. Okay, what is the impact of doing a market order? Well, doing a market order means that you are the one taking the trade. And when you take the trade, there are two ways to think about this from a psychological point of view. So one thing is to place an order, okay? And you go for a walk and you come back and you got filled. You took the trade, but the psychological stress is nothing or very little when you place the order, but then you went for a walk. So there is not psychological stress where you are in front of the screen and stuff is going on and based on the stuff that is going on, you click manually the market order, that has much more psychological impact and therefore uh, the emotions loaded with doing a market a market entry like that were going to be more. So in one hand, you need to understand and you need to experience that for yourself. In one hand, we are looking for more evidence, which is a much more conservative way on how to trade because you will avoid stop outs by doing this. So it's more conservative. So you would think it's going to relax your mindset. And in one aspect, it will, because you will get less stop outs and therefore you will avoid stop outs. You know, there, there will be times where, you know, this market is going to just, you know, come down, 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 do something like that here and be like, mm, whatever, whatever, whatever. And some next thing you know, stop you out. So if this was to happen, okay, the guys taking entry A, they would be stopped out. If you are the guy doing entry B, you didn't get stopped out because you never entered. So it's more conservative. You will avoid stop outs, which will relax your mindset. In the other hand, if you do the market, it will be stressful because you are the person clicking the button out of things going on in the front of your chart. Maybe you have no time to go use the toilet because you have to stay and watch. <laughs> um, so it's more stressful uh, so what's the perfect one right probably the perfect one is this one number two but what's the issue with that one you have to be super quick to execute super like really really quick so you know i think that the best way to to get to understand yourself you know and, and this this everybody's different there's no right or wrong guys uh I would suggest everybody to practice this. Maybe you use a paper money account to do this and you take, you know, 10 trades with A, 10, 10, 10, 10 trades, you know, uh, with with A, then you do 10 trades with B1 and then you do 10 trades with B2. And after those 30 trades, you're going to be like, you know what? I feel comfortable doing whatever of those three choices. And then this is how you trade. 
at least for a while. Is that making sense? And then, you know, as you keep evolving as a trader, you may realize, you know what, now maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to use market orders because whatever, you know, And but then uh, after two, mo two months later, you realize, you know what, uh, there have been all these trades that if I had done A, you know, maybe it would have been better, whatever. And you're like, I'm just going to start doing A now, you know, and, and maybe you evolve as a professional of the market and, and you change a little bit your entry style. But at the same time, you need to understand the pros and the cons and beyond having an understanding of it because I said it, well, you need to experience it yourself by practicing it so you get to understand who you are. Is that making sense? And and then have a proper decision because you don't want to focus only on the strategy. You also want to uh, accompany the mindset and the psychological impact of all of it. Okay. Something that happened to me, and this is just sharing about myself a little bit here, but something that happened to me when I started learning how to trade, uh, that was a long time ago, more than a decade ago now. But uh, when I started, you know, my, my prior life was about engineering uh, and my background is engineering, so I'm a little bit of a perfectionist guy. So my mm, and and you know I, I don't mean to sound uh, arrogant uh, because this is not my intention. Please don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you know I'm, I know I'm not a stupid guy. You know I'm I'm, I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world, but uh, certainly I would not consider myself uh, unintelligent. So you know when I came to uh, learn how to trade, I started thinking, uh, well, you just give me a methodology, I just follow the rules, and that's it. And that was my engineering thinking about how to trade. And you know what? It makes a lot of sense. And that's exactly what you need to do. Follow rules. But if you don't understand the psychological impact of the rules, or you break the rules because of lack of discipline, and this creates another psychological impact, another type of psychological impact, and now you get emotional, or now you get to conclude certain things that are based on your mindset more than the reality, then you get in trouble, and then you wonder why. And uh, many traders uh, experience uh, struggles and problems in their trading because they just do whatever out of what they read in a book or something, and they don't understand the psychological impact of it. And that's why I'm spending time uh, adding uh, these extra comments, okay, which uh, sometimes make my my explanations a little lengthy in time, but uh, in my mind is the key, okay? Because in the end, I mean, I think you you will probably agree with me if I tell you that what I'm teaching you here uh, is certainly powerful, but it's quite simple to execute. It's not that complicated, okay? Uh, I think that we can all do it. It's not that complicated at all. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the end, sometimes then when you start trading, now you get emotional, you, there is a trade to be taken, but you convince yourself, oh, I'm going to pass on this one because of something. And again, uh, psychology is key because we are human. Okay. Good. So um, anyway, let me see the comments, the questions. So Andrea, is the limit order on entry A and entry B to be set at the top of the UFO or at the start of the inner circle? A uh, good question, Andrea. Very good question as well. So this uh, basically depends. Okay, this basically depends. Let me get the, the notes. Okay, this basically depends on uh, your target strategy. So um, we have seen actually. I think it happened last Tuesday that I was planning on a trade. And the trade I was planning had the rival UFO, which is the one to be used to take tar to take profit. That rival UFO was too f too close, and therefore I didn't have much room for the market to move. And therefore, instead of shooting for an entry located at the beginning part of the UFO, I was then looking for an entry located to where uh, the inner circle is. So, I mean. If I was to ask you this question without adding you adding multiple scenarios to the answer, I would say that the perfect entry is the inner circle. That's what I would say. It's, the, it's always the best entry. Guys, give me just one second, guys. One sec. Sorry, I needed to clear my, my throat. So um, the perfect entry, Andrea, it's the inner circle. But my recommendation, if you have room for movement, if the if the rival UFO is far enough, my recommendation is to enter at the top of the circle, not the inner circle. And at top when it's green, bottom when it's red. And the reason why is because uh, for you to get filled, you need to get filled 
you need to get feel at the ask or the bid price, depending if you're a buyer or a seller. And normally you will always have like a tick difference between the buyer and the seller. So it may be that you go for the inner circle and the futures markets go down, 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 actually touch the inner circle and from there bounce, but you didn't get filled. And the reason why you didn't get filled is because you got someone who plays the orders before you, because remember, futures is first in, first out. You got someone who plays the, the orders before you that got filled, but you haven't. Does that make any sense? Where if you were to place the order a little above, well, now you kind of guarantee you will get filled before it gets to the inner circle. So, so may, you know, you you may de- you you could take this and make it as complex as you want, which I know is not your intention. But basically, the choices you have is enter at the inner circle, which is the perfect price, is the ideal price. But you may miss it because futures is first in, first out. Second, do what I suggest, which is go for the outer circle. Because that way, it's an easy way to look at your entry price and you're not going to miss it and et cetera, et cetera. Another way to do it is say, okay, I'm going to look at the inner circle and I'm going to add one tick. So if the entry is 30, 39.75, I'm going to call it 40. You can also do that. Okay? Uh, but bottom line, uh, to me, and again, back to trading psychology, what bothers me the most is to identify a trade and miss it. That bothers me way more than taking a stop out. I know that's part of the game. But missing the trade... You know, that bothers me, okay? And again, that's maybe my little, uh, the perfectionist in me. So that would be my my answer to you. In order to not to miss the trade, either one tick above the inner circle or to keep it simple, just look at the outer circle and that's it, okay? Unless you don't have profit margin and now you have to go deeper inside and then you will risk missing the trade, but it's in exchange for a bigger profit when the rival UFO is too close. Um, Ricky, good morning, Jose, from... Uh, WPB, good evening for you again. Um, well, I'm just thinking, what is WPB? Mm-hmm. Could you please clarify this for me? I'm, this may be very silly, but right now I'm I'm not sure what is WPB. <laughs> uh, Rick, uh, Ricky, uh, please, Jose, can I see what you typed before? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the typing today is right here. That's the typing that we have from today. Uh, Need more coffee. (laughs) Um, Moshi, I may not be the sharpest uh, knife. Oh, well, Palm Beach, got got it. So silly of me, Ricky. So sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for clarifying because you know it, it's it it uh, yeah it it's great for me to to hear where you guys you know and you know it's uh, it, it's magic guys you know uh, even though technology is my background and engineering and and it's uh, where every day to use technology you know uh, you know being each of us in some part of the world and you know discussing trading that we all love and every, all of this you know I love it so thanks for that. Uh, I may not be a sharpened knife, but I am still in the silverware drawer. <laughs> I hear you, Moshi. Uh, and uh, I love the way you put it. Yeah, um, same, same in my case. Uh, yeah, Bojan, thanks for that. Subhash, can I ask what could be the initial expectation of win rate to start with a realistic number for the first 100 trades? Uh, well, it really depends on the time frames that you trade. Um, I mean, a very good reference point is the the UFO stats, right? Uh, another reference point is, you know, if you look at the trades I've been executing myself on the on the on the Tuesdays, even before we we were using edge timeframes and and all of these and and the DMI, you know, I've been around you know the 60s, 65 percent, something like that. So you know, I, I think it's it's something like that. Okay, but uh, let, let me ask. Uh, is, is Anthony with us today by any chance? Because Anthony uh, sent an email to, to us the other day um, and um, I didn't ask him for permission to share. Uh, if not, I would share with you. Um, but if Anthony was with us today, I would ask him to comment on that too because he has done an incredible uh, work. I mean, when I say incredible, I'm, you know, I, I just just love to see when you guys need, when you guys do what needs to be done, right? An incredible job. I say I call it incredible, even though it's it's the normal thing because it's what needs to be done. But I call it incredible because trading is not for everybody, 
and the people here we take it seriously and when i see you guys do what needs to be done i love it and it's incredible because most people don't do it okay so what he has done is that he, he has been using the the back testing feature of uh, trading view some of you may have seen this before okay and the trading view feature basically is that is the the, the replay right and what, what he has done okay is you know he went back in time so with the replay he went back here right or whenever actually he did that for multiple months and you know you have the tool updates your ufos and now uh, you have the you know you have your your toolbox here and now you just click play right and you see what happens right and, and this is replaying so that ufo failed that ufo failed as well by the way strong uptrend okay so sell orders tend to be removed isn't it? So anyway, you could apply the rule, right? And, you know, you keep playing and go over the replay. So new green UFO form, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, and he's been backtesting the methodology for multiple months. And he ended up sharing the stats. And the stats are quite powerful because he was not only talking about the win-loss ratios. He was also talking about performance, you know, monetary performance, stuff like that. So uh, it seems that Anthony is not with us today. But, you know, if you guys are uh, connected with... Um, uh, some social media groups out there, you may see it because he has published some of his results in some places. Uh, and if he was to give me permission for it, uh, I would be delighted to share that in a future session with you guys. Okay. And if not, again, the, the best thing to do is that you do your own back testing. Okay. But anyway, uh, so anyways, so guys, uh, second portion of the session today. So you are in the trade, right? So you did all your steps. You identify what side of the market you should, should, you, should you be in, step one. Then you want to see how much room I have for the price to move. Define the th target strategy. Step three, you plan your entry and your stop, which this, to be honest, goes together. It'll be together when I, when I share with you um, that uh, diagram flow and all of this. You'll see it's, it's going to be together. Okay. And then finally, uh, you know, you are in the trade. Price comes to you, you get filled, you're in the trade, you, you, you did the manual entry with the evidence and the reactive time frame or not, but now you're in the trade. So now what happens? Well, now we get into trade management, okay? We get into trade management, and this means that now you are in a live trade, okay? This is not a trade that you are planning. This is not the before the trade. This is now the during the life of the trade, okay? So what, what to do, okay? What to do? And, and of course, if you have a good plan, and, and by the way, the way you plan the trade, especially if you use a safety target, uh, you already have some of the possible outcomes of the trade planned in before the trade started, right? So, so one option is to do nothing, okay? So you could certainly go ahead and do nothing, okay? Many people out there talk about set and forget, set and forget, and to be honest, if you ask me, is it right? I will always say that doing nothing is always a right thing to be done. There is nothing wrong with planning a trade and following the plan. Especially because from, a, again, back to the psychological impact, um, you do really work well on building your discipline. And as long as your plan is good and you make money with it, you create a huge reinforcement of discipline because the more disciplined you are, the more money you make and the more you price yourself by being disciplined, the more disciplined you will want to be. And it's, you know, if you ask me, do that thing, is, is that a good choice? Of course it's a good choice. Okay. But at the same time, sometimes, not always, sometimes, not always, um, it's a little bit too hopeful to do nothing because let's face it, markets are dynamic. Things change. And this is more important especially at key times, for example, right before the market opens, during the market open, right before a key news announcement. So there are specific times where many things are going to change and very quickly. And when I say many things are going to change, it could be many things from the outside world uh, that in the end translate into adding orders or canceling orders. Because in the end, it's all about the UFOs. It's all about the unfilled orders. Uh, so the question is, for example, a new announcement, a new earnings report, a new economic employment report, these may have the impact to canceling orders or adding orders, you know, and just do nothing during the trade where something like that may happen during the life of the trade. 
I would call it just a little of hopeful. Okay. Um, again, it's okay to do nothing, especially when it's a longer term trade where you are planning the trades with a very high time frames. The higher the time frame, it makes more sense to do nothing because if you plan a trade with a very high time frame, let's say you use, let's go extreme. Let's say you plan a trade with a monthly time frame where it's going to take three months for you to get to the target. Well, of course, during three months, many things are going to happen every single day. So if you were to do something every time something happened and you're going to pl and you plan to be three time three months in a trade, that means probably that you're going to end up canceling or doing something to this trade way before you get to the target. And in other words, you will never reach the target. So doing nothing makes sense, especially when it's longer time frames. But the shorter the time frames, the less sense it makes to do nothing because the markets are very dynamic. Computers are trading. Algos are reacting to things such as news, for example, and therefore just crossing your fingers, hoping for the best. It's a little too hopeful, even if you had a good plan. Okay. Now, in the other side of this equation, you have the people that do too many things during the life of the trade. Okay. And it's very easy to prove for this group of people that are just, you know, the, the market moves, you take profits immediately. The market moves, you move the stop immediately. You, the market moves, you do something immediately. The market moves, you add more shares immediately. The market moves, you do something immediately. So the people that do that, it's very easy to prove them that doing nothing is the best choice. Why? Because if you keep messing on the trade and you keep improvising in between the plan, it means you have no plan. So then it's better to do nothing and follow a plan that mess up the plan or improvise, which is the same as not having a plan, <laughs> right? So what I would like to end up is somewhere in between. I would like to end up in a position where you have a plan and you are ready to follow the plan, but you also plan for some exceptions of the plan ahead of time and you act on those exceptions in the form of rules, which is going to be our trade management rules. So you are open to do that, to do something during the life of the trade without doing too much, because if you do too much, it means you're improvising because you can, you know, it, it would be overacting. Is that making sense? Uh, so I wanted to phrase it this way because, you know, in the industry, I mean, I've seen articles, I've seen, uh, I mean, the, the, the industry is flooded with professionals in the market uh, you know, um, talking about things and and we passion we passionate people about trading. It's very very common for all of us to, you know, connect with you know uh, an article, connect with uh, uh, whatever, uh, an, uh, whoever, a trading room on the internet, whatever. And next thing you know, you hear comments coming from someone, and many many times, you know, uh, maybe that person said something, but maybe it was very well said. But what happens is that this resonates with you too strong because maybe yesterday you had a trade where that very thing happened and because that guy said something that happened to you and is very fresh in your mind because it happened yesterday to you, next thing you know, that one thing becomes like a universal statement that you will keep in your mind for the rest of your life. And the fact is that it may not be so useful, but it, re re it resonated so strongly with you because it just happened to you yesterday. And so I would like to make sure, you know, that my comments here come from a very neutral point where my intention is to creating rules to absorb and take care of all scenarios possible during the life of a trade where the idea is to do as little as possible, but if something needs to be done, let's do it. Because if something needs to be done, you cannot cross your fingers and do nothing because that would be too hopeful. That's where I'm coming from. Okay, guys? So hopefully you understand because I'm sure you have heard many people out there in the internet and stuff that, you know, there are... You know, they are scalping, overdoing it, trading, you know, adding contracts, subtracting, subtracting contracts. And, you know, they are on top of their, you know, they, they need a new mouse every month because they just kill that mouse on how many times they click, right? And then you have seen the opposite of people that plant trades and never do nothing, not, never do anything at all. And, you know, there is nothing right or wrong here. It's more about using logic and using common sense and having a good reason well-supported reason to get into the trade, but where if any parameter may impact that reason that you got to enter the trade, have rules to act on that, you know, to stay aligned with the reality of what's happening instead of hopeful, hoping for the best, or stubborn, sorry for the word, a little strong, but sometimes we are stubborn, isn't it? We plan a trade, now it doesn't make sense because market conditions has changed, but stubbornly, we remain in this position and maybe it's better to close it. Is that making sense? So we want to find that balance between being flexible, but at the same time, 
uh, not to be all over the place, improvising, which basically means that you don't follow a plan because if you improvise, you have no plan. Okay, that's where I'm going from. Okay, so if you ask me, doing nothing is that a good choice? Well, yes, and no. And now, if I say that, you understand where I'm coming from, right? Uh, so choice number one: do nothing. Not ideal. Valid, but not ideal. Choice number two. Okay, choice number two. Uh, you will want to have rules uh, related to the amount of time in the trade. So what does that mean? Well, when you enter a trade, if everything that we are discussing in these sessions are, is true, right? If you got unfilled orders and new unfilled orders are about to be entered, and the market is trending, and the trend is strong, my friends, that market should move. So if that market doesn't move for some period of time, probably something's wrong, right? And if you stay there forever, well, in one hand, it makes sense because that was the plan. But in the other hand, that's when you start falling into this hopeful type of behavior, isn't it? I'm, please, please move. I was expecting you to move, but you're not moving, but please move, I'll hope that you'll move, right? So we'd like to, no worries, Marcus. I know I'm extending this session a little beyond what I should, but you can catch up with the recording. Good to see you, Marcus. So uh, if too much time has passed, maybe we should do something about this trade, okay? So we need to talk about what to do when too much time is passing and what is too much time. Uh, what should we do, you know? So we need to talk about that. So we need rules based on amount of time in the trade. Another another um, uh, type of trade management rules that we need is what happens when a market moves too far and too fast. And this is just like, I would even call it the physics of the market. You know, there are moves that are sustainable and there are moves that are not sustainable. And even though there are very famous quotes in Wall Street, such as, the market could be could behave irrational for longer that you could remain solvent. And we certainly should respect that quote because it's true. Sometimes the markets move crazy and they remain crazy for a crazy amount of time and everybody's shocked and no one could believe it and it happens, okay? So we certainly should respect whatever truly happens. But at the same time, those are normally... Um, you know, uh, rare events. You know, normally when a market is moving in an irrational manner, uh, typically it will tend to normalize. And the reason why is because there are many market participants. It's not only three people trading, it's millions of people and the markets are huge and things tend to normalize. So if a market starts moving too far too fast, immediately you should, you should switch your careful, uh, you know, mode on. It's like, you raise the flag, I am a careful trader now. Does that make sense? Why? Because automatically your thinking should realize that you may not get to your target. Okay? You may not get to your target. Why? Because it's moving too far too fast. If the market was to move in a rational, uh, or let's call it a normal way, right? A normalized way on how to move, then it's going to keep, you know, that uptrend will, will remain as an uptrend for a long time and it will remain moving at a reasonable pace, and that's how it remains sustainable. But if the market is moving too far too fast, the first thing you should be thinking is, oh my God, I'm going to miss my target, right? And therefore, you should do something about it instead of hoping to get to your target, uh, you know, because it's not sustainable. And guess what? It may get there, but what if it doesn't? It would be very sad to see your account grow very fast, and next thing you know, you give up all this money, and you end up with a small loss or a small profit. Not ideal, okay? So... Again, doing nothing is certainly something you could do. You said, my entry is here, my stop is there, my target is there, I got a safety target, do nothing extra, okay? So that's a valid choice, not ideal. So my proposal for you will be to uh, add rules based on amount of time in the trade, on having the market move too far too fast, or having additional evidence that the trade is going to work. Because if you have additional evidence that the trade is going to work, 
Actually, that means that if you were not in front of your computer at the time at which you enter the trade, you could actually plan a new trade to enter now because you have evidence enough to enter now. Uh, of course, you are not going to enter now because you're already in the trade, right? But if you were not in the trade because you just came home two hours later and you missed that one trade, now that you have new evidence that support the same trade, you could certainly enter. So if you are, if you happen to be in the trade because you entered some time ago and now you have additional evidence kicking in that tells you, well, you know, you could plan on a new trade here. Well, then it would never make sense to leave your stop, okay? Uh, you know, to where it was in the first place because now you have new evidence that would be valid to plan a new trade. Does that make sense? So in other words, let's begin one at a time, okay? And, and this is going to be the, 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 the three set of rules, okay? Because basically do nothing, well, do nothing is, is another way to say no, no rules, okay? So you know what? Let, let me remove it, okay? So a uh, amount of time in the trade is going to be one time, one, what, one type of rule that I want to add. And the, the, the rule is going to be super simple. Okay? So what is the rule? The rule is if three candles of the, of the time-based edge time frame have passed. Okay? And you haven't reached your safety target, then if in profit, here we go, if in profit, close the trade. Okay? If in a losing position, wait for the trade to be back to break even and close the trade. In other words, uh, that's going to make you quite con um, conservative. And uh, this, of course, is something you need to watch manually. Uh, but this is going to save you. Uh, problems. Okay, so what is three candles of the time-based time frame? Well, the time-based edge time frame. Well, it's going to be the two-minute time frame in this case. Okay, if you are using, if you are using the setup with the eight, then it would be three times eight minutes. If you're using the setup with twenty-one, it would be three times twenty-one. That would be for your four-hour trend, and this one here would be for your sixty-minute trend. Okay, four hour trend, 60 minute trend. If you use the two minute time frame for edge time frame, then you're, you are trading the 15 minute time frame. Uh, and if every three candles, that's three times two, six minutes, right? Every six minutes or every uh, 24 minutes or every 63 minutes, right? So every this amount of minutes, if the market didn't reach your safety target, get out. That's it. Just get out. Now, of course, you cannot get out for a loss. Uh, it would not make sense because you were willing to risk X amount. So you cannot, let's say the price is in the middle of the zone, right? Um, you know, you cannot just get out for for a lesser loss than expected because uh, you are not proving wrong yet, okay? Even though the fact that it stay a long time is not a good sign. Uh, so one choice, uh, you know, uh, certainly one choice would not be to close the trade for a small loss here, okay? You would wait for price to come back to break even, okay? And once the price comes back to break even, okay, here, now you would close the trade. If the market has already moved to the safety target and now is wherever it is, okay, but you didn't have, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. If you haven't moved, if you haven't reached, let's say, let's say this is your safety target and you haven't got to your safety target yet, but you are in profit, okay, well, close the whole thing 
Because if you are halfway here, somewhere halfway towards the, the safety target, and you close the whole position with the full size, okay, this is going to be a profit similar to the profit of the uh, safety target, okay? And, you know, you not only you remove the risk of the trade, you collected a small profit, uh, and it's not to be proud of, but you totally eliminated any other additional risk on this trade. And you would want to do that because this trade is not proven to be reliable since three candles have passed in the time base age time frame and nothing's happening. Okay? So I'm going to give you another choice for the people that uh, you trade and you want to be a little uh, more flexible, which is up to five candles. Okay? You need to pick three or five. Okay, 305, uh, and that would be the maximum. And I'm giving you five as well. Uh, the reason why is be, is especially for the people trading uh, during time frames which are not U.S. time frames, where normally things tend to take more tend to take more time to happen. Okay, so if you haven't got to your safety target in three to five candles, you get out. If you were in profit, you take whatever profit you have. It's not going to make you proud, but this trade is not proving to be what you thought. So get out. And I'm not saying give up on the trade, because if the trend is still up, et cetera, et cetera, then just wait a few minutes, because new UFOs will form in your three edge timeframes. And the moment those UFOs form, you will be able to replan on a trade, okay, and re-expose yourself to the trade. But if it didn't move in that amount of time, it is probably a bad news and you are probably end up going to be stopped out. So to avoid that, get out. If you were in a losing position, of course, to, to not to close the trade, you know, uh, with no real reason. So then uh, you would wait for price to go back to break even. So when you get out, then you would have no no impact in the PNL. Okay. Uh, let me see. I have wrote half instead of half not. Let me see. Uh, if three to five candles time have and you have not say thank you thank you so much thank you so much Max you got the message but I didn't type it right thanks a lot okay so now this is the most conservative rule the most conservative rule of all the rules I'm going to give you for trade management. In other words, if some of you were to say, I don't plan to use time-based stops, I would get it. Because this is tedious, you have to watch it, all that stuff. Uh, and uh, the psychological impact of that is that if you were to get out manually with a time stop and then the trade works, it's a little painful on the psychology. Okay, So this is... A very conservative rule, but it makes sense, okay? And it makes sense, especially when you trade at key times during the day, such as market open, things like that. My friends, if whatever was going to happen not, is not happening, probably the opposite of what you thought is going to happen, okay? So get out. That's it, okay? So that's basically the, 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 the bottom line. I will, I will let you experience with it, okay? I will let you experience with it uh, because... Um, you know, it will open your eyes to the beauty of it and the pros and the cons of it. And, you know, I think I phrase it, but at the same time, you have to internalize it. And this is done through practice. Okay, so this is rule number one. Again, I, I am fully aware I am quite delayed on concluding today's session. Okay, but it's going to take me, let's call it another 10, 15 minutes to go over the other rules and we will we'll, we'll be done for the day. Okay, so if possible... Stay with me. If not, you can watch the end with the recording, okay? Let me take a look at as well at some comments and questions that I missed. Uh, let me see here. Uh, okay. Uh, the high with the right risk to work ratio of 50% is a great win rate. Yes, it is. Uh, Rick, I was a, uh, is this going to be recorded? Yes, it is recorded. Uh, the hide, uh, yep, thank you for that. Uh, Marcus, uh, yeah, Trustation does not have any replay function. This is true. Uh, Subhash, I like you 
your method of being perfectionist as being an engineer we want everything perfect set up but in process we simp we, we miss simplicity would you explain well with evidence thank you for that thank you so much my friend um i find i lose less money when i do nothing very good and that if that's the case the hide is because you have a good plan okay but many times people have a plan which is not too good and they still do nothing because somewhere they're, they're they've heard that you need to stick with the plan, you know? So again, the plan is to be or, or very good or flexible based on reality and whatever changes you do is all rules. Okay? In other words, the train management is part of the plan, okay? So uh, if Tekar, how are you, my friend? Uh, I found that listening to others in the past has always damaged my trading. Yes, m many times. Because we tend, to, we tend to sometimes kind of be like, I don't know if this is the right word, but kind of be impressed. It's like, oh my God, this guy is amazing. I'm just going to do what he does, right? And the problem is that we don't have the full understanding of the psychological impact of it or the pros and the cons. And, uh, and Or sometimes we may even misunderstand him the first time we listen to it and then we got in trouble. We wonder why. Again, um, you need to make it yours. And this comes with practice. Hey, Gabriel Jose, since this is intraday trading, you may want to address trade management based on time of the day. Uh, yes. And that's exactly my point with three to five candles. So if you are trading during key U.S. times, which is opening and closing, three candles. If it's not that, five candles. Okay? That's what I meant by three and five. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Let's keep going, guys. Let's keep going. Okay? So too far and too fast, okay? So what are we going to do here? Well, again, let's say you have this target somewhere higher, somewhere higher, and price comes to your UFO, and instead of going up, pausing, giving you a UFO, rallying, giving you a UFO, rallying, instead of something like that, Right? Let's say you have something like this. Straight line. And no UFOs. That's the worst. No UFOs. Just keep going. No UFOs. Well, you need to realize that if this happens, that market has the potential of going the opposite direction in no time because there is no on-field orders to buy to stop it falling. Right? So again, that's what I call too far too fast. Now, what is too far and what is too fast? It's difficult. It's difficult to, to have a, an easy rule, especially because when trading, you are in the heat of the moment, right? And it's difficult to have a rule that is easy to follow to do this, okay? So uh, the one I'm going to propose, really, is done by watching the matrix, okay? That's it. So instead of looking at averages, ATRs, whatever, just looking at the matrix, okay? Or, or if you don't have a matrix, looking at PNL. okay? So the idea is... Question number one is, how much is the profit at your safety target? Oh my God, let me rephrase that, safety target. So this is the question, okay? How much is the profit of your safety target? Out of simplicity, um, to have wrong numbers, I'm just gonna use $100. So let's say you are looking at the matrix and you have your, oh, sorry, you have your buy order here, okay? You have your buy order here, right? And you have your safety target here. And when you look at the safety target, you look at the PNL that I cannot show you now because the market is closed, but here on this column, it says $100, right? Uh, so you take that number, right? And remember, it's half. So that number divided by two, why? Because if you use a safety target, you're gonna be you're gonna be scaling out half of that profit at that point. So really, even though it shows 100, when you get there, you're gonna make half. So you look at the number divided by half, 100 divided by two. It's uh, it's 50 in this example that we I'm using as an, as a reference. So you will look at this PNL, and that's gonna be your reference. Okay, that number becomes your reference so you start now looking okay looking at how many times i have
produced my reference profit without any ally UFO? That's the question. Okay, so for example, uh, the market comes to your UFO, starts bouncing, gets to your safety target, right? So your PL shows 100, half of the position is closed, so you just banked on $50, right? And now, let's say this thing keeps going, and the same size of a move, the same size of a move replicates, right? And now, instead of 50, you are making, I just hit the wrong button, guys, so I'm going to apologize for this. So you are now hitting, instead of the safety target 50, you are hitting double the move, which is 100, right? And you are hitting 100 with no UFO, because a different story is, a different story, totally, totally, completely different story is, what if I hit my safety target, okay, and that's my safety target, I made $50, and before I make another $50, let's say somewhere here, a UFO forms, and then I hit 100. Well, if I hit 100, after a new UFO form, I don't care because this is sustainable. This is not going too far too fast. New UFOs are forming, which will help me for the market, even if the market goes back down, is likely going to bounce from the UFO and continue the up move, right? But if that UFO didn't form, okay, if that UFO didn't form and I get to $100 of profit, 50 and 50, okay, twice my reference profit is made with no UFO, Okay, so if twice, I'm going to look at how many times I have produced my reference profit without any ally UFO, if, if, I, if, I, if this happens, okay, every time, for every time this happens, I will move my stop, okay, by that same amount. In other words, and I will phrase this much better uh, in a future session and when we build that uh, flow chart and all of this. But basically what I'm saying is, let's say you're in the trade, this market moves to 50, hits a safety target, all good, keeps going with no UFOs, right? And with no UFOs, hits 100. So what's going to happen? My stop was located here. That's where the stop was. So what am I going to do? I'm going to move it by this amount. How much is this amount? Well, the, the, the amount I have between my entry and the safety target happens to be the same amount I have between my entry and my stop. So if I move it one time, I will end up having my new location for the stop where the entry was. In other words, it's kind of like I moved my stop to break even. But what? why did I move my stop to break even? Well, I moved my stop to break even because I got two times the move, uh, my reference move, my reference profit move, uh, without any UFOs. Okay, the key is without any UFOs. So, so I will look at how many times I have produced my reference profit, and for every time, this happens, okay, after uh, surpassing uh, the safety target, I will then move my stop by that same amount as long as no new, I'm repeating myself here, no new ally UFOs form, okay? Now, let's say, so this came in here, okay, price came into the UFO, is bouncing, 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 reaches target one, keeps going, 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 no UFO forms, keeps 
it doubles the move, right? So what do I do? I take my stop and I move it to break even. Let's say it keeps going, 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 going and reaches these three times. So what do I do? Move my stop one more time by the same amount, which is here. So now my stop is located to where my safety target was. Let's say it keeps going, 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 right? By the same amount again, what do I do? Move my stop again by the same amount, okay? Is this perfect, amazing? No, it's not perfect, it's not amazing, okay? Uh, but at least if um, I was to, to be in a situation uh, where the market is going too far too fast, that market is going to crash all the way and I got nothing to stop it, so that's what I would be doing, okay? Now, which time frame is the one I'm watching for those you able to form? Because a completely different story would be that this thing bounces, reaches my safety target, bounces, reaches double the move. My stop now went from below to break even. That's where my stop is now. Different story is that now I got a UFO forming and these rallies. Okay? So if that's the case, my stop now, which is the rule we haven't discussed yet, my stop will come in here, okay? Which is more than here, okay? Why? Because now I got evidence, okay? I got additional evidence. New UFOs are forming, okay? M new UFOs are forming, uh, which are a la UFO, okay? So new UFOs forming in the in the edge time frame equals immediate replacement for the stop uh, right beyond that new that new UFO. Okay, so if you have a new UFO that forms immediately, you just move the stop below that UFO, okay? And if you think about it, this is kind of like you reset the trade management rules because if this has moved and moved and then a UFO forms and then moves and all of this gives you the opportunity, you haven't reached your target yet, okay? The target is up there. You haven't reached your target yet, but now this gives you the opportunity to move your stop there. If you think about it, this is kind of like you plan a trade where the top of the UFO, right? If I was to draw it as a UFO band, the top of the UFO band is your entry right there, and the bottom is your stop, right? So in other words, this is like you have a this is like you have a trade. So what would you do is that you would continue utilizing that that reference profit, okay? That we were looking at earlier, those fifty dollars in this example, and if this thing was to keep moving one time $50 from that point, two times $50 from that point without any UFO forming. So you would take that stop below the UFO and the stop would be moved to break even. And you just keep moving that stop following price based on that. If, if you had the move happen once, and then twice, and then forms a UFO, right? And you move your stop here, okay? You move your stop here, and the market comes, and it spends one, two, three, four, five candles, and nothing's happening, what do you do? Time stop, and you close the trade right here even though you never got to your final target because this could be the beginning of the trend reversing. Okay? So you enter here. You made all this profit already. Okay? No need uh, to hope. Okay? If what you were expecting would form, the, the, what you were expecting that would happen didn't happen, you take action. Okay? Let me take a look at your questions because I really throw in a lot of information here. Uh, and it's something... 
to think about, isn't it? Uh, let me see, let me see. Would you add on to your trade at that point? I would not, Maka. I would not. Um, you could. But then I would need to step, I would need to take a step back. Because something that we haven't discussed yet in these uh, sessions that we do together is trade management. Okay, we have not discussed any of that yet. And therefore, position size. So if you were to put yourself in a position where you are up and to add to your trade, then you will need to go back, think about the size of the trade you want to enter at the beginning and how much more you allow yourself to add as you add. In this case, I am looking at this as a one trade at a time per market. And therefore, I'm not planning to add because of that reason, okay? So that's why my answer to you has been no. Uh, if d Definitely, if you were to catch one of those very, very powerful trends that sometimes happen and you kept adding, oh my God, that one day is going to be like the, the trade of the month. Is that making sense? But uh, at the same time, because those, those incredible days uh, don't happen that much, uh, you know, I rather remove risk of the trade because the more price is away from your entry, the more probability against you you have, where the more price is inside the UFO, the more probability on your side you have. Is that making sense? So I rather reverse it and treat every trade one at a time. Uh, and, you know, when I'm out, if I'm proven wrong and then new, you, new green UFOs happen because the trend is going to last forever. So, you know what? I'll have an opportunity to re-enter. So, my initial answer is no because of those two reasons, okay? It doesn't mean it would be wrong, but you will need a rule for risk management and position size before you begin, which is how much risk you take in the first trade <clears throat> and how many more risks you are willing to assume as you add size to the original trade. So my initial answer is no. <laughs> okay, Maka? Um, yeah, so guys, let's do this, okay? Uh, we went for two hours 40, guys. We are champions, okay? We are champions or I talk too much, one of the two, or maybe both. <laughs> but um, a powerful session today, guys, okay? And I, I pushed a little bit because I wanted to kind of conclude uh, the subject of intraday trading. I mean, this is not concluded. Uh, there is much more that we could discuss and we will. But at the same time, you know, I, I need to provide tools for everybody. So I wanted to conclude this fourth session of intraday trading in this first pass. We'll come back. I need to build those flow charts. I need to, you know, there is more stuff. Okay, we, we, we'll, we'll keep going. But for now, what we have in front of us is more stuff for you to practice, more stuff for you to review, rewatch this recorded session, uh, more stuff for you to send us questions with questions and we'll send you answers. More stuff for us to speak the same language. So on Tuesday, when we do intraday trading, I'll be using all of this and more. Uh, next weekend will be a break for all of us. So well deserved. And the next weekend, remember, the next weekend uh, is going to be a Q&A, open Q&A, not fully open because one of the subjects for sure will be calibration. But apart from calibration, everything will be open Q&A. So we can get deeper into clarifying questions you may have uh, uh, developed out of practicing this for like two weeks, etc., uh, etc., et and uh, and you know just keep taking it to the next level. Okay, so I'm counting on you guys many many times, almost every time I talk about teamwork. You know I I'm I'm devoted to you guys, but I cannot do it alone. So this is teamwork. Okay, to to help you and assist you and help you grow. Um, and of course, especially this comment is especially for the people that you are in the process of learning because many of you are very experienced, okay? So uh, many of you here in the session may, may have traded for longer than me, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, this this uh, comment does not apply to absolutely everybody here, but I would guess majority of you. So for the people that you are in the in, in the process of open to learn, applying new things and so on, um, you know, just keep practicing teamwork, guys, teamwork, teamwork, practice all of this, Demo account if you're not fully comfortable. Real money if you are more comfortable. Smaller size if you are less comfortable. You decide all of this, but practice, practice. Send your questions. Uh, you'll get answers. And then two weekends from now, uh, we'll get deeper into it in the form of Q&As, okay? And I would like everybody, 
okay, to be present because Q&A sessions is uh, something that we have not done yet. And in my mind, it's, it's probably going to be the most useful, uh, especially now at this point where we really speak the same language. Okay, so, uh, and again, working on building more structure into how I provide the information to you guys. And I'll be w working on those um, flow diagrams and, and, and more tools that they have in the works. Okay, guys. But anyway, um, pleasure, pleasure. Before you go, guys, make sure you click on the like. Okay, um, it's always uh, nice and helpful for us, guys, when you guys click the thumbs up button uh, on on YouTube or our Facebook as well, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So please be kind to us. Uh, also, <laughs> also go ahead and in the in the um, in the YouTube. Um, many times, you know, uh, you send us questions that uh, as we respond makes us notice that you you are not receiving real-time notices from YouTube, which means that you are either subscribed or not to the channel, but maybe you are subscribed, but you didn't click on the bell. So please make sure you subscribe and you click on the bell because this will also send you the, the real-time notifications of videos that are posted or, or whatever. So we are well connected. Again, teamwork, and that implies good communication. Okay, guys, so see you soon, my friends. Uh, super pleasure. I'll miss you next weekend, even though we all deserve a little break. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, counting on you to keep up with this amazing work that you guys are doing. Super pleasure. See you soon, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.